What's happening, guys? If you love this podcast and you really want to support us, you can go to haveawaypod.com. You can get yourself some merch, something like this hoodie, something like that T-shirt. There's plenty of stuff for you to go and have a look at there. There's also links so you can buy tickets to the Have A Word live shows and also tickets to mine and Dan's tour shows if you want to come and see us do stand-up. That's all at haveawaypod.com. We also do an extra episode of the podcast every week on patreon.com slash have a word pod. Sign up on Patreon, get the exclusive Patreon episode. There's also some discounts on merch, discount on live tickets, but the extra episode is only on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash have a word pod. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Podcast. Podcast. We're back. Welcome to the Have a Word podcast with me, Adam Rowe, and him, Dan Nightingale, to the guy who commented and said, who's the guy on the right, instead of reading the description where it tells you everything, we're here. How are Hi. You? Great. Thanks for having me, Adam. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Love it. Love it. Is this right? Is this right? Is this right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just feels. I had a Nando's yesterday. Oh yeah! First Nando sat in for a long time, and that did not let down. That yeah. I even I think it's a classic case of. I had a KFC and a kebab yesterday, and I have pooed my bum all out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the sharpest minds in British comedy. There, uh, not a wordsmith. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing when you haven't had something. Like I, the McDonald's queues was a bit much for me. Yeah. The KFC bedlam in the queues. But when you're in Nando's going, oh, this is great. It's the food I love. I've not had it for a while. And now I don't have to do any walking. I've just got fucking minions. Uh, boy, boy, could I have a little more Paris salt, please? I couldn't possibly get off my fat fucking ass. COVID's everywhere. Boy, yeah, boy. Yeah, it's turned Nando's into a restaurant. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's literally why it took them two months longer than every other restaurant to reopen. Because they like, were, we're like, going to have to train the staff yeah. to be staff. I, I, I tell it. you what I love about Nando's though. I love this about any restaurant that you get, do this in. Paying before you get your meal. The worst bit of a restaurant is that, can we have the bill please? And everyone's dead busy and it takes ages. Paying in advance and when you're done, you just fuck off. Oh, you can literally oh. put the fork in your mouth, last chip. Just drop, the, as you're standing up, drop the, Kobe, drop the fucking fork, clatter. I don't give a shit, I'm Gerard, out. Gerard, fuck off. <laughs> volley, it. volley your last chip across, this, across the room. It, they, had, they had different members of staff for different things. At one point I went, can we get another Diet Coke? He went, okay, I'll just tell him and I'll ask him to get you one. I was like, could you get me fucking one? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not the uh, drink guy. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck are we doing? Come on, I know, I know I get it. And I'm all for it. Sachets of lemon and herb. You can't have bottles. COVID's on the bottles. I get all that shit. But get me a fucking Diet Coke. Don't tell your line manager to speak to the supervisor to go, Darren, what will we do? There's a Diet Coke for table eight. Calm down, Susan. We're going to get through this. This is like the tango of 2018. Fucking ridiculous. Uh, this is good, though. Tasted good. It. What did you go for? Um, oh, I feel like I'm going to get it called a Tory. Butterfly chicken. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. That's, my, that's mine. Yeah. Is it good? All right. I just thought I was going to get it called a Tory. <laughs> you can't be a Tory in Nando's, though, can you? <laughs> what would be the most Tory thing? Or, like the portobello mushroom and halloumi wrap. Could I please have the portobello mushroom? And I, I don't want the bread. Could I get it wrapped in a poor person? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like it. Um, I'd like a little bit of. Uh, do you do chili jam and working class misery? Is that right? <laughs> Just drizzled on there. The tears of a child. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, that's as far as it goes in there. And then you've got to get like a a white wine, a dry savannah or whatever it is they sell. That makes it a bit Tory. But Nando's inherently is not even just working class and left wing. It's fucking what? What? You know, wife swap. Yeah. Why don't they just do life swap and have like really wealthy landowning Tories? I've already worked out why they're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> just live on a council estate. Like instead of wife swap, which is fun, I've watched that a few times. I would fucking love watching like the fourth Viscount of Gloucestershire try and deal with Burger King in Manchester Viscount, Piccadilly. Aren't they biscuits? Yeah, all right. But, y- What's a Viscount? Aren't they those oh, is, is he biscuits? taking the piss? Is he taking the piss? I don't know what a Viscount is. It's like a... 
I think the little Minty Circle ones are coming again. <laughs> oh. Mate, I think you've just applied for the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it would be amazing. Just like, oh, what is this? It's a fucking whopper. Oh, is this what they eat? What yeah, are these t- chips? Tories on like in Dovey, council estate, Dovecot, Liverpool. And just like they get like baseline benefits. Yeah. Because like they all think that like Allah, like, oh, they guess we have to, our tax money, it funds their, they have unlimited money and we give them it for nothing. I'm like, yeah, let's see you live on fucking chips and fucking chicken dinosaurs for six months lad. let's see you have open a tin of beans and put tin foil on the top of it and put half of it in the fridge for tomorrow so you're <laughs> rationing your beans and then you your beans taste like fridge because tin foil does fuck all once the tin's <laughs> open oh this is oh, i'm sure this will make a lovely anecdote one day but oh, i just don't know if i can have how to pronounce it greg's once again. Oh. Let's see how your children deal with the lollipop man telling them to fuck off when they're in year three. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off! Back on the side, t- uh, the <laughs> same. Get, get on there, you little fucking rat. <laughs> father, father. <laughs> um, it also, by the same rationale, it'd be, lo- it'd be great to have like fucking Daz from the estate just Lord on, of the manor. on a fucking super yacht somewhere have to like jobs oh, hell. No, they should have to swap jobs as well so like right. like like one lot are on benefits because they've swapped with someone who hasn't got a job but like the like other Tories have to go and like work in fucking like sports direct on a zero hour contract and they don't know what they're fucking getting this week yes mate but then fucking John O is now running like a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> you yeah, gotta yeah. make decisions and just see what Day happens. Day one of a life swap. <laughs> <laughs> Daz is not doing well as the fucking CEO and president <laughs> of Shell BP. <laughs> fucking hell, it. There's fucking there's oil everywhere, mate. I, I'm oh, telling you right you? now, I, I I reject the insinuation there. I think you put a scally in charge of one of those companies. That, Scallies can make money selling fucking Jag Armani t-shirts. <laughs> Those big companies, you put you put me in charge of running fucking Coca-Cola, mate. I'm gonna send it through the fucking roof. The best, I guarantee you, the the best Coca-Cola marketing campaign I've ever seen. Remember when they put names on the bottles? That was genius. That just put put everyone's name on the bottle. People will get photos of the bottles. I think it's one of the best marketing things I've ever seen. I guarantee you. <laughs> That was a, a working class person who was like, I'd fucking look. Like, that wasn't some degree cunt. It wasn't. I honestly thought he was going to go, put the names on the barrel of oil. That's what <laughs> it I, I thought you were like, right, there you go. Fucking, you've got a big... <laughs> Lad, I used to sell DVDs to me newspaper round. You're telling me I couldn't sell oil to the Saudis? Do you reckon Daz would do that, Shell BP? Right, yeah, 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 yeah. International fucking oil. Whatever, whatever. Why don't you get people going around the fucking boozer? Hey, lad, I got some fucking quality. Oil like fucking Shell BP. It's not Jack. It's genuinely, genuinely rot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's got my name. Look, he's got. What, what's your wife called? Get the sharpie. Get the sharpie. No, listen, lad. My mate was in Afghanistan, right? And he got on to the fact that it was all a fucking faux thing, lad, because they just wanted the oil. And he was like, I'm not going back to West Derby without my own fucking tin. And he brought it back over in empty McCain's ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's good shit. <laughs> and you can do your fucking potato wedges in it. <laughs> I'd fucking love a chance at running a company like that. Oh, God. I want to make Life Swap. When Have A Word Productions becomes... When we're making millions from this podcast yeah. and we start commissioning shit, Life Swap. I'm getting Jason, Jacob Reese mogg and he's working in fucking Greg's, mate. That's where he's going. <laughs> I hate that fucking cunt, you know. <laughs> the casting of that would be... Yeah, he's horrible. He's like a... He looks car- like Walter from the Beano, doesn't he? he? Yeah, and he's a cartoon Tory cunt. Yeah. It's like... It's, it's like... He's like, oh, I'm so Tory. But he, he looks at himself and goes, but it's a fucking great thing. I'll lean into it. I, He's got no self-awareness that that is a dreadful look to look I'm like a Victorian villain. I'm not condoning political villain. violence in any way, shape or form, but I'd love to smash his head in. Mm. Like, I don't, if I hit him once, I would have to hit him again. Like, it would feel too good. Do you know what I mean? You're really ruining this, this audition for Life Swap. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you seen his kids? They all look like they're like in a new horror film about kids who fucking like can mind control you. 
Did they all look like a young version of the demon headmaster that he co- kind of looks like? Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> and they've all got like the same clothes on. I mean, they're in school until uniform, but you know, it just looks creepy. Tory kids. Ah, is there anything more fucking suspicious than a young conservative? Oh, like, like, what do you know? <laughs> what have you seen? You <laughs> fucking Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly who they are. Oh, damn. That was a fun start. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. My uh, my neighbour has just got in my head. She's a Tory, because I've said Tories a few times, and she's obviously, it's riled her a little bit. And I, I said this morning, she was like, oh, God, I think another shutdown's coming. And I went, no, no. You should have said really? this your Tory Come rat, on. it's lockdown. I went, I'm, you know, I was like, maybe, she said lockdown. Um, I really can't let go of shutdown just because we branded the podcast shutdown for about 50 episodes. And she was like, no, I think it is coming. And, and I know, because I've talked to her daughter, who's sound, I love her. And I said, I think it's going to be regional. I think they're going to, there's going to be restrictions, whatever. I don't think, she's like, no, I think there will be another lockdown. And I was like, I'm hoping the Tories are going to Tory and look after the economy. And I've said that to her before. And this time she went, I'm a Tory. And I went, oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just, it just, it was a slightly awkward moment from across a fence. And I was like, and I bid you good day. And I'd, I'd have probably just gone, oh, so you care more about like your car's wealth not depreciating than killing starving kids. Yeah, okay, love. I'll see you on Tuesday when I drop you off at uh, wherever we're going. Yeah, and then I take a recycling and go, Janet! And just fucking <laughs> boot it in a garden. No. I'm a Tory. Yeah, well, whatever, but it's, I just, I do, I, I, it's not been doing me good waking up going, oh, God, like I saw that curfew thing. I don't know if you saw it. It's going to be like 10 o'clock. They're like, yeah, they're going to... Because the businesses. virus waits until 10 o'clock. The virus is like, oh, oh, oh I'm not going to kill anyone at quarter to 10. No, uh, sir. For come, I am a gentleman virus. Come to bed, COVID. <laughs> All right, Corona. <laughs> I'm out here killing nanas. I'm telling you right now, I'm not doing another lockdown. I'm not doing it. I, don't want I was you going to. round the bend. I wasn't allowed to gig. We weren't allowed to be in the same room together. I'm not doing it. If there's another lockdown, I'm carrying on gigging and I'm not messing. If it's illegal, it's illegal. The police can come and shut them down. What is it? A hundred quid fine. So as long as I sell 10 tickets at a tenner to go for every gig, the fine's covered. Go fuck themselves. I'm running gigs. This podcast's still happening. Fight us. You know it's in Runcorn, but Runcorn's a big place. I bet you can't fucking find us. You fucking busy rats. By the way, this podcast is not being shut down. I will build the fucking glass perfect. <laughs> I'll be like, oi, tap, tap, fucking wind your neck in. There's no way the podcast is stopping. And then I saw someone, because the lockdown, it's starting to, like people are saying it. It's not just my next door neighbor, who by the way is sound. I love it. She's fine. But it's starting to get, it's starting to gain momentum. And then someone tweeted us going, oh, that would be more, uh, Daily podcast. <laughs> so I, I was literally like, I, I was like, find a gift, find a gift. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went with Will Ferrell going, drinking wine. I'm, I'm not doing another lockdown. Like, I'm not doing no. it. I'm, I, I'd rather get arrested for right. doing comedy illegally. <laughs> I would rather genuinely than be in my house on my own, not being allowed out other than to go to Asda and back. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Holy shit. I'd rather be in no. prison where at least someone might fuck me. <laughs> How low he's really lonely since the breakup. How lonely <laughs> he's got himself convicted, two year sentence just to get a cuddle. Who's cuddling him? Mm, a few of the lads <laughs> passing him around like a fucking teddy bear. Yeah, there's not going to be another lockdown, Adam. I sort of lean to you for these fucking moments of like. I don't see how the country economically could cope with a second lockdown. So I don't. And the Tories are going to Tory and they're going to save the economy. And I'm, <laughs> I'm now. At the point where I'm like, I hope they fucking Tory and I hope they save the economy. But I don't know what the best thing to do is. My opinion, as always, is based on very limited one-sided research. I look at the shit that I like and that I agree with. And that you want to happen And almost. I want to happen and I do what everyone else does. And I've stopped commenting on shit online now. Because I've realised what the world is. It's people who don't know what they're talking about arguing with other people who don't know what they're talking about as if they both know what they're talking about. Go on any tweet about 
Brexit or should we be locked down? Should everything open back up? Is the economy more important than coronavirus? Is coronavirus more important? And there's one person who was like, no, it's this thing and I'm right. And then there's the exact opposite below it. No, I'm right, this thing. And no one's got a fucking clue. So I'm just looking at the shit that I want to happen. And that's what I'm going to do from now on. You save your nan if you want. My nan's already dead. I'm going to work. <laughs> <laughs> what a great reasoning. Excuse me, sir, you're going to have to close down this gig. Fuck it. She's already dead. Your headliner. <laughs> I've got no grandparents left. During that, I was like, is he getting me emotional? I was looking at Adam as he was saying that. And then I realised I hadn't got my glasses on. I was, <laughs> I was doing that thing. I was like, fucking hell. How, ang- how anxious about a lockdown am I? I'm literally looking at Adam going, oh my God, I'm having... I keep doing this. It's the second time I've done it. Yeah. That's what that's my honest opinion though. Like I'm sorry. I'm I'm very sure all, <laughs> all of your nanas are lovely and I'm sure granddad, you know, has got a good few years left in him without corona, but I'm I'm not going round a bend to save someone's nan who I've never met. Hey, and PS, they've got their um pensions and their houses are paid off. So let's do the stats. You know, they're, they're talking about young people and like, well, young people are, you know, they're Infecting under 25s after they're so going after Freshers Week, aren't they? Yeah, and they're like affluent under 25s, they're a problem because then they're giving it to their grandparents. You're like, well, then fucking tell the grandparents to stop. Like, we want to see our grandkids. I'm like, I know, but you can't shut down a country when it's clear like that. I think that's the thing, it's so hard to be ageist about it, but. Just make better choices. Let the world trade and just let, let's be sensible. Matt Hancock said, didn't he, that there's, people have been getting too many tests, but then there was a tweet he put out saying, if you've got symptoms or even if you've got any doubts, just get a test. That what they're trying to do, and this is not quite tinfoil hat, but getting close to it. I think what they're trying to do is make it purposefully confusing so they can blame the public. So when there's a spike or when there's a problem that, and they haven't locked down because they're not going to, they can go, look, we told you. After we gave you all 50% off for a month, we told you not to go in more than sevens. And you did, didn't you? You Seven of you went to your nans. You, you did that. That was you. That was you. doesn't matter that all 40 of you could be in the pub. <laughs> we, that was fine. They she pay, didn't get it in the pub. They pay VAT at the pub. They're shifting the blame onto the public so that when the next election comes around, they can go, we did everything we could and the public didn't listen to us. They're making it purposely confusing. And their core voters are not moving. They're not going to. So they can sort of do whatever they want. I've give up. I'm not asked about politics anymore. I find it, it's so far beyond parody and genuine reasoning that I'm just like, I'm going to do what I want. And I don't care anymore. It's be like last week when, <laughs> last week, I'm <laughs> just, like, I'm, I'm, it's, when it, when it's particularly lockdown based. Yeah. But Adam was like, it was like we, like the table was a Tory, like, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jacob, we, Fucking mug, like literally. Last week, I've when, just turned the laptop on. Last week, when Matt Hancock got asked, uh, Tony Abbott, the Australian guy, you know, he's a homophobe and he's a misogynist. And what do you think about that? And he went, "Well, he's also an expert on trade." And that was the end of his sentence. I was like, if that, <laughs> if that was on like the Mash Report or some fucking BBC program, which was political satire, you would go. I mean, they're not that bad, are they? That's a bit unrealistic. No one's that stupid. It's fucking bananas how far it's gone. What about Hitler? He was a mass murderer, massive anti-Semite, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Really lovely uniform designer. (laughs) To be fair, was really good on branding. Someone said Genghis Khan was very good at table tennis. (laughs) (laughs) It's a valid point. Jimmy Savile was a great DJ. He was. It doesn't matter, does it? We uh, we're so it's far. It's not the same. We're it's not so the same. far. We're so far beyond help that I'm just. I've just decided that it's funny, and it will be in perpetuity. Yeah. Okay. Perpetuity. I can't wait. Word of the in day. Perpetuity. Carl's got a boner. Carl's literally rubbing off on. Uh, <laughs> Mama like that. Mama, Mama like, like that. that. Rubbing off on Adam, who's turning into a fucking human. Oh, I'm thesaurus. quite mad today. Um, I've got some gigs I need to plug. Yes. Can we do that now before I forget? So, Saturday the 19th of September, I'm coming to Leeds. Uh, Hang on. It's gonna have a- sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. 
I was really trying to give you like a bent to make it cool. <laughs> and I'm then a- you realize we've either got our theme tune or death. <laughs> well, let, let's do it again. Ready? Go. So listen. I have some gigs coming up in the Yorkshire <laughs> Moors. Sorry. It's the wrong one. Go. I have some gigs coming up in the Yorkshire Moors. Surrounded by the bodies of murdered <laughs> prostitutes. <laughs> Nurture! <laughs> Upset me, nasty bitch! Where did you think I was going to go with that? Good. <laughs> God. I mean, start the tour to Yorkshire and build up from there. I wasn't ready for Moore's murders. You literally. I didn't say Moore's murders! I wasn't talking about the kids. I would never go there. I said the prostitutes. It's time to have a word with Adam Rowe. He's had a coffee and he's off the road. Can you tell about the coffee? Mate, <laughs> I, I'm not joking. I love it when you've had a coffee. I am close to buying you a fucking unlimited gift card at Costa because I love it. I'm hyped today. I'm feeling good. But gigs. I love it when you when yeah, gigs lead. So I've got some gigs coming up in Leeds. They're both. There's two. There's an early and a late show on Saturday the 19th of uh, is it September. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Saturday the 19th of September. Early and a late show. About half the tickets have been sold. It's in a barn on a farm because nothing improves my comedy like the smell of cow shit. <laughs> feel you looking at me um yeah saturday the 19th i've got thomas green who's a really good mate of mine and we're looking to start a, a new podcast soon together you, you guys are really gonna like thomas green but if you're in the yorkshire area and you fancy doing something on saturday the 19th there's early and a late show go to adamrow.co.uk forward slash shows and please get some tickets to come and see us do we're gonna film it as well it's a really cool venue it's like an unusual way to do stand up in a barn it's gonna be dead dead fun it's undercover it's not gonna be outside of it rains we're all gonna be sound uh, you're going to love it. I'm going to love it. About half the tickets left. Please go and get them ASAP Rocky. You say ASAP Rocky as well. Sometimes. I really find it hard to say ASAP without saying Rocky after it. Do you want to uh, Do you want to tell everyone what you've been up to? Yeah. Been shagging your mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's one less Costa. Oh, he's no, got, honestly, on, he went double coffee. espresso. Um, she actually died in a dick some- in accident. She died in a dick accident? Yeah, a little... I was sc- a there, little, motherfucker. A little, a little scouser <laughs> fucked her to death. I mean, she was already on the way out when, he, when she looked at his eyebrows. Shagged to death? Yes. I mean, like, the orgasm was so good, it just was like... No. <laughs> and a fucking kidney popped out. Google that, please. No, God, that is a bad Google. Just Google shag to death orgasm. It'll come up. Oh, it's going to include a horse. Um, No... <laughs> That's a dirty. That's a dirty so, Google. But you think someone has been shagged to death? No, I think people have people have died. It's usually guys having heart attacks in it. <laughs> Carl looks oh, horrified. Carl, what happened? Go and talk us to it. Hi, Carl. By the way. Hello. Um. Yeah. The number one result is the famous horse sex death. Oh yeah, the one that went round. I knew it. I knew it. How are you when you know that that video exists and someone sends it you? Do you watch it? I've seen it. No. I didn't. I didn't know she died when I watched it. What? Like, oh right. I just, it was just you a just heard there was an by interest- a horse, which you know was right up my street. Oh god. Oh, it's a lovely one. What street is that? A country lane. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the, ja- the Japanese army used to rape their enemies to death. Nice. Oh, and guess where he's just been. Is that why you went? I'm, I wasn't in the Japanese military now. You say that, but I haven't seen any photos of you in Japan. You have? You've seen I have. fucking loads. Yeah, but there's green screens and that now. I don't know whether they yeah, were real. I, wa- I wasn't in the Japanese military, Adam. I don't believe you. They actually haven't got a, they haven't got a military anymore. Because of what they, they did. They haven't got a military? Because what of, do all the army do then? Because of, yeah, just... Yeah, they, they've only got defence. They've got Japanese defence and then the American military are over there. They've basically got, uh, you know, Dad's army for Japan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? <laughs> Oh, if you think called Ingolan, Don. <laughs> Whole song. Whole song. This is your turn to do musical impressions. I actually had a mate message me this week. Going, Are you not worried that what if the Guardian do a piece about you, you know, about some of the jokes? I was like, what do you mean? She was, she was like, you know, I, I know it's a joke, but some of the jokes, I just think about race. Sometimes I think maybe they're not 
your jokes to make. And in my head, this is how I work. <laughs> this is how mental he's made me. I went, The Guardian. Fuck, that'd be great publicity. <laughs> <laughs> I am living for the day that I get a, a hate piece written about me in The Guardian. The Guardian can suck my dick and so can all the right wing ones. Every politicized newspaper is a bag of shite. The Mail, The Independent, The Guardian, The Met, The, 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 the other one that I'm not going to mention. They're all just, they're all shit. And if any of them like or hate you, then you're not a good comedian. <laughs> I like The Guardian. But um, well, I, I, I like gonna, The Guardian, but I'd love them to come after us because it would be great publicity. What I, I shouldn't have said that. My publicist is going to be like, uh, we need to talk about your podcast. Okay. Um, you have the Swindon Chronicle. They're your <laughs> only availability. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, yesterday I filmed some telly. Filmed the stand-up sketch show, which was great. Um, and it was, the, since we've come back from lockdown, it's the most I've felt back. Like, you know, just back. So they, they, <laughs> That's so scarce. Back. They had, what, about 80? Carl, come down with me. They had, like, 80 people in, maybe 100. Right. In, in Up the Creek, which is a nice room, but it looked full because they'd done it, like, cabaret style. Yeah. Um, it's a good club as well, isn't it? I was first after the break. Oh! There's was four acts in the first section doing, like, 15 to 20. You mean you fluffers? I thank oh. you. Break and then me and I walked on. And Carl said for like for the first thirty seconds, I saw I looked a bit nervous. And I do get a little bit when I, because I know it's permanent. Do you know what I mean? It's a chance. Totally walked on stage. It's an England cap, isn't it? Yeah. And I had me three. I had me three routines that I knew I was doing. Walked on and I was like, I'll start with me new bit about clap for the NHS because none of the other acts had really done COVID stuff, not much of it. And I was like, I'll come on, I'll do that. They'll all go, oh, he's. I didn't even get through it because there was a guy who'd heckled a couple of the acts early on and he heckled me. So I was like, did you clap for the NHS? And he went, no, fuck it. And I was like, why? And he was like, oh, I will work for the NHS. And I just fucking buried him. And it made me mentality go from, you're doing telly, you're doing telly, to, no, you're actually in a comedy club and you fucking know what you're doing. And then I was worried because the three routines I've done on it, I did me argument in Greg's routine I did me girlfriend playing with me penis routine and I did the me dad's no brain to mouth filter routine. They were the three that the, the TV company asked for. Um, but I haven't done any of those jokes for about, I haven't done Greg's for like four years now and the other two, like maybe like two and a half years and a year each. So I didn't really know the bits. I was, it was times that me and Carl were together, I just had my earphones in and just listening to my own jokes. They're not I, match fit almost. Totally. And I was like, I, don't, I was walking on going, I don't know the, the rhythm of these routines as well as I used to. But then after that, the confidence it put in me, it was like I was just playing the video of me at Hot Water. I was just on, I just knew every beat of it. I knew every breath to take. And like, we can be as sort of, Agarious, what's the word? What do you mean? Like braga, braga, braggadocious. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> braggadocious. It wasn't what you were going for, but it worked. Um, because oh, it's our podcast and whatever. And I fucking volleyed it. I just had a really good gig, and I come off, and my agent was like, "Well," and I was like, "Yeah, that was good. That one." It. I just knew I'd done a really good job, and I'm so looking forward to doing the sketches for it. The stand-up sketch show. This is series three. I've now done all three series of them. And they essentially, they turn your stand-up into a sketch. Uh, there's a few of mine on Facebook and stuff from the ones I've done in the previous series, but that argument in Greg's routine, which is on YouTube already under Liverpool Arguments on the Hot Water channel, it's ju it's going to work really well as a sketch. And Because they'll like to out and film it in a Greg's or something that'll look like a I've Greg's. Got, I have to call it a pasty shop yeah. in case they can't get access to a Greg's. How great is it, after listening last week to you talk about the Jonathan Ross... Well, let's talk about that on Patreon. Oh, so. right, okay. So on the Patreon episode, we talked about Adam going to the to do the Jonathan Ross Which stand-up show. Which was good, but because I had but such it wasn't a, in a club, was it? This was in a club. It wasn't in a comedy club. It was in a TV studio, and I had such a short set, I got in my own head a bit, and it still went really well, and I'm sure it'll, it's on in a week or two. I'm sure it'll come out dead well, but yeah, th this one yesterday just felt like... It felt like a gig rather than... It felt like a gig that was getting filmed rather than a taping. I wonder if people know what we on, we're, we're on about. When when you get offered TV work or warm-up or all of the stuff that isn't circuit comedy, uh, corporate, like, charity gigs, alarm bells start ringing when they're like, and we'd like you to do it 
inner, and then there's like a gap, and you th- you think, please don't say office, please don't say fucking college, <laughs> please don't say fucking church. There's so many, v- and and we're gonna do it, the charity gig, the corporate gig at a comedy club, and you're like, beautiful, <laughs> you just made it five times fucking easier, and that's what they, they they've done there with the sketch show. Yeah, they've taken it to up the creek, which isn't just a like any comedy club it's great it's one of the good ones yeah. it's one of the most it's one of the oldest ones in london as well brick wall backdrop nicely lit it's it's a really good room it's got funny in the fucking walls tell you what as well i took my agent took some photos while i was on stage i've put them on instagram go and give it a like at adam Rowe comedian on instagram at adam Rowe comedy on twitter um at dan has a podcast because this is all i've got on go both <laughs> um i am not getting tired of people telling me i've lost weight no. <laughs> Every comment is looking slim, lad. And I'm like, yes, that I am. And the next one is, hey, you look all right, don't you? Oh, lad, you lost loads of weight. And it's fucking... It's giving you that incentive. Oh, yeah, I feel wonderful. And I, but what it's also doing is I'm now getting pissed off when people don't say it. You know, when I yeah, see someone yeah. I haven't seen for a bit, and they're just like, you're all right, lad. You yeah. Like this. yeah, yeah, like, are you not going to... Three stone. Are you not going to... Hello. Uh, Major, li- it's me, but better. Yeah. I'm like, do you not think that I deserve a compliment for the work I've clearly put in, you fat twat? Can I just say, it would do me a lot of good, friends, colleagues, audience members, if you would just call me out for getting fucking fat. That you are be- getting a bit yeah. titty. It, yeah, it's time. I want audience members to like, all right, fatty, be great. Tell you what, let's get Carl's perspective. How bad has Dan let himself go? Quite bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Awful. I don't and like your hat either. And it's mainly, it's mainly from all the fucking breakfast your mum's cooking when I fuck her. Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> didn't work. On the anniversary of her death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last time I fucked her. It's the anniversary of the last time I fucked her. To death. <laughs> Shit, I shouldn't have lost confidence in it. <laughs> ah. um, but yeah, if you could start like fat shaming me, that'd be great because it's annoying. Please do go and buy tickets to Leeds. That was my point. <laughs> Should we I'm have a break? Just going to get on the Slimming World website. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped are the best male grooming products on the planet. They've only just launched in the UK. They've sent me and Dan a razor each. And I've got to say, proper top tier stuff. This is the best razor I've ever used. It's the first time I've ever shaved me balls and not snagged the bag. The good aren't they? I get the little, you know, I get a little bit of like over the pubes tub and I nick that. I've just been using an old head trimmer. I've used this and you're like, oh, that's a slide, that's a glide. So you don't get that sting in the shower. Yeah, it's horrible. Though. When you get like a, a little cut on your bag and then you get a bit of ball sweat seeping into the cut and you get sweaty sting. Mm, keep talking sexy, Adam. <laughs> That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. This is it. They've engineered the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. It's the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0, and it's just been released in the UK. It's smart as fuck. This is their third generation trimmer. It features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents. And when I'm saying this is the best razor I've ever used, I'm I'm not messing, you know. I know it's easy to say that when you're getting sponsored by a company, but it, it's it's really, really, really good. It the battery's amazing, it lasts for an hour and a half, so you can shave for longer. It's water resistant, you can use it in the shower. You don't have to be shaving stood over the toilet anymore. It's sick. One of the coolest features is the LED light. It illuminates the way as you shave along so you don't get any nasty nicks. And they've just got an upgraded 7,000 RPM quiet stroke motor. The nicest bit, you get a load of kit when you get this sent to you. But the charging stand is charged by USB and it looks sleek as fuck. So you're not getting any whinging from your partner, your missus. It's going to sit in the bathroom. You're going to be proud of it. Look, don't take our word for it. If you're listening to this, watching it, pause the podcast here. Go and order one for us. And they don't just sell razors. You can get all sorts of male grooming products from manscaped.com. And experience it for yourself. It, it's really, really good. Your balls will thank you. This is the important bit. Every listener of Have A Word gets 20% off. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD. That's WORD, W-O-R-D, at manscaped.com. And make sure you use that code, otherwise they won't know that we sent you. That's right, 20% off, free shipping all over the UK and in America, actually. But you can use the code word WORD, that's W-O-R-D, 
We should have picked a different word because code word, word just sounds clunky, doesn't you, it? You're not thick. You get it. Word. It's word. Time shave? to shave those balls. Should I shave yours now? I don't. Should I shave yours? We'll just do that now. We'll show you. Oh, don't. You meant to flinch. <laughs> Pev. What was that? That was me on a website. Shows again. <laughs> That's my Elton John impression, man. <gasps> I watched that. It, I t- oh, he's had a stroke, hasn't he? <laughs> he's having it while he's doing Fucking Elton. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm slapping the table. But it was like he was going. <laughs> oh my God. Can you smell toast, Elton? Can you smell toast? <laughs> to whoever runs the no context have a word account. That last bit there, could you no context video that of Dan just acting like he's got something missing? <laughs> can we have the video version? Because I just want Dan. <sighs> yeah. I want to see if people can guess what he was doing. Um, have we had a have we had a break? Oh yeah, we've pop- popped it in, haven't we? You don't need a interval. Uh, first half. I've just read <laughs> I'm such a moron. <laughs> this is You've prepped the first half of and the I episode. Just read and first read half. Word, first half. Fucking moron. Um that's like getting a script for something and reading the character's name. <laughs> from H. Can I have Carl's number? This is from a bloke listener. I've not put their name in because I don't know if it's a, if he genuinely thought it was going to get read out or if he was trying to do banter. Can I have Carl's number? Not gay myself, but he's got a sexy voice and I would love to see him bang my missus. <laughs> what the actual fuck? <laughs> like, I tell you what, if this happens, I want this podcast getting some commission if we're starting jiggling oh, in your t- mouth. 20% of that. Yeah. Mama like 20% that. 20% plus VAT. Mama Daddy like that. Like that. Daddy like, like that. that. So it's actually 24%. So until you're VAT registered. And then, and you then are annoyingly like, good looking though. But this is... I don't see it, you know, like for a long time, like growing up, like girls do find him very attractive and I just think he's one of the least attractive men I've ever seen in my entire life. No, but that's personality. I'm talking about looks. (laughs) Um, But that is a level of... I find that really annoying. That's annoying. We've done fucking 103 episodes of this shit. You roll in from Japan, and to be fair, you've been a massive add-on to the podcast. Shut up. (laughs) But people want you to bang their missus. Would you do it? I haven't even seen him. Would you do it? I haven't even seen him. If I, yeah, I was going to say, if I was single, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would franchise myself out for that, yeah. I don't mind banging. Franchise yourself out yeah. like you're a fucking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rowie's dicks. Rowie's dicks. So Rowie's what? dicks. Dial up and order a Rowie's dicks. Yeah, I can see that franchise being worth a lot. <laughs> I want to start a Rowie's Dicks. You can do it, lad. Just grow your eyebrows out. Um, Is he offering me money? I think he's just no, offering Carl. you his wife's puss. Well, I've got one. I've got a beautiful... Oh, uh, no, but it's a hypothetical, mate. You don't get too lost in the weeds Sarah on this. Sarah is dead. She got shagged to death by... Um, me. No uh, Edmonds. By the Japanese army. <laughs> <laughs> no Edmonds <Lebanon's> taking, <laughs> taking random fire. No Edmonds. Is he a bit? Is he a bit shaggy? No Edmonds. No. I just remember a lot of people are watching this now. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> oh. No Edmonds. We've got like a bullshit catalogue of stupid random <laughs> celebrities, and No Edmonds hasn't been. I'm not doing anything with this. I was just itching me out. I swear to God, I'm not like drinking dicks or anything. <laughs> I'm not. You've really made me nervous. <laughs> After Sean, <laughs> Sean, who we know. Fucking videoed you drinking dicks while I wasn't looking. I hope there's people who've never watched this and don't know what the fuck we're on about. Because out of context, this is amazing. I was just drinking a dick behind Dan's back and he's not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you, if you're a young buck, you're still young, an older couple, not me, an older couple, attractive woman, you know, he's got, you know, angina. He's like, oh, cool. Oh, my, my ticker's not what it used to be, boy. But you're a fucking stallion. Look at you. You look a bit Japanese, eh? Chinese, you one of them. 
Oh, she likes you. You've got thick calves. You could do some fucking damage. Look at you with your shoes off. You're a continental gentleman. Got to bear in mind before you answer, it sounds like this guy can do you a cracking deal on a car. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll give, you, I'll give you a lovely 1998 Vauxhall Tigra. <laughs> Four lady owners. Only two of them died in a vehicle. <laughs> Will you come this back? This is our job. Will you, <laughs> Will you come back to the Shag Palace? Huh? Yeah, yeah, go on. And and uh, give my Pam a good seeing to. <laughs> hey? She's up for it. She's up for it. She's cleaned the bedding. Yes, let's go. Would you, yeah? Honestly, would you? What, when I was young? No, now. Like, Laura's dead. No. Why is everyone why? dead? I just... <laughs> why did, exactly. Your fantasies... I know, he's, a, he's mental, died. isn't he? He... he, he you, the 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 I'm potential. I'm trying to make it so that like you definitely can't get back with her, and she's gonna get. All oh, right, off. she just you can she you can just leave me and go. It's yeah, done. But then there's always a lingering hope, and I'm trying to remove that. Right. If I was young, yeah, but I I don't think I'm the <laughs> ringer anymore. Who wants? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like Carl's twenty eight. He's indecent. Nick, he can do five k. Yeah. Hey, I honestly keep getting. Yeah, but you're like in a the bit, fetish zone now, aren't you? Like dad, dad bods are like big now. Yeah. For who? Dad bods are the thing for now. younger women. Yeah. No younger couple. Like, there's no like 23 and 24 year old couple that were like, I know we've only been seeing each other six months, but I really like to try new things. What are you into, Jess? Well, I've always just fancied like early middle aged men. And I you're just, wrong. Honestly, what? that is happening. Dad bods are huge. Dad bods are the thing. At Dan has a podcast on Instagram <laughs> and Twitter. And Genuinely. Like, no. because, like, people are a lot more open sexually now. And the whole, like, you know, daddy issues, which used to be, like, taboo to talk about. But now girls are like, yeah, I just want to, like, oh, fuck me dad. Oh, great. So I don't even have to, like, like take the hat off and a fucking... I don't even have to pretend, like, I can really, like... I can actually, like, lean into it, like... Where the bloody hell have you been? <laughs> right. Are we doing this threesome? Under my roof, my rules. Right, we're having a bath time first. No, we are having a bath time. Right, fine. We won't have a bath time. We won't have a threesome. Exactly. I've run your bath. Get in it. Arms up. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing, mate. Fucking. T what? Like, just before we have a threesome, I'm talking about lawnmowers. I don't know if I want cordless. I don't know if I want petrol. Mama like that. Mama like, like that. that. Surprise, lad. I'm just saying, if Laura ever, you know, comes to her senses, yeah, and snakes off on you, yeah, you've got options, boy. Oh yeah, yeah. You could put yourself on like. I might try men. Men. <laughs> yeah, being you, straight. Even more for men. Being straight's game. Oh mate, you're the bear, aren't you? Oh mate, no, I'm a cub. Oh are you? Well, like a small. I'm not big enough and hairy enough to be a bear. We literally, if I keep going, I'm, you're a seal. I, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're a seal? Is, you're, he, a, is you're, he a bear? No, he used to be. He's now like an AIDSy bear, you know? Less hey. hairy. Used to have a hairy back and be fucking fat. Now he's like small and like, he's like one of them that's wandering around and he hasn't like eaten for a while. <laughs> Yogi don't look so good. <laughs> I could be, I'm, I'm, I'm like older cub. But man, I could, <laughs> lick my lips in a really weird way though. I could bang any man. Men are easy. Yeah. Aren't they? Yeah. You know, gay men. No offence, guys. But you're DTF. I used to do a bit about how, like, you sex when, like, homophobes, like, sexuality is a choice. They're choosing to be gay. It's like, they're not. Because if it was a choice, we'd all choose to be gay. Like, no one's choosing to be with the opposite sex because there's so many problems there. You know what I mean? Whinging. The toilet seat's up. Of course it is. I've had a piss. Like... Suck a bit of dick and play FIFA with your mates. That's a that's the dream, that isn't it? Yeah, it's the, you've just li you've just basically described the gay experience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like if I could stomach, so all gay men are like, oh my god, thank god we're not into vaginas and women. Uh, boys, let's play FIFA. No, but that's what I'm saying. X X Y. Oh, that's point. my special. Like, but I, move. if I could be me with my exact personality and all that, but just be into dick. Would you go for a guy like yourself? Be like, ah, you big, hey, love you. You're my husband, you fucking bender. Hey, or would you, I'd like a twink. What's a twink? Oh, a little thin, like sparkly one. I, 
Mm. <laughs> I think I'd go Asian. Honestly, if you if I was honestly, given the choice. I know you're single now, but if it, if you turned up at the hot water dressing room with a young Asian boyfriend, <laughs> I would retire from comedy because it would have peaked. <laughs> All right, lad. All right, Paul. All right, Danny. All right, Mick. <laughs> I can't wait to hear his name. <laughs> <laughs> young lad here young lad's all right young lad have you introduced have you met everyone is that his name young lad mr adam is very good to me <laughs> mr. Good. mr adam take me many nando <laughs> i like podcast <laughs> <laughs> he sometimes play when we cuddle when we make magic cuddle he play podcast in background. Time for have a word. <laughs> I, I wish he let me write to my family. <laughs> this is already by <laughs> such a significant distance the best episode we've ever done. There's not another episode that we've done in the past hundred and three that comes close to this. I'm sorry. And this is the week that my mate messaged me going, "Are you you're right doing those jokes?" <laughs> well, apparently, I'm leading oh, the fucking. I'm so. I said that on stage the other night. I did a, a joke about... So, I said, so, like, telling a room full of British people that someone doesn't drink gets the same reaction as being at an orgy and someone saying, Dave's got AIDS. Right? It's a stupid little joke. And uh, someone went, oh. <laughs> someone went, oh. And I was like, will you shut up? I just lost it. I went, will you shut up? It's, I'm at a comedy club and I'm, I obviously don't mean it. Do I? So sh People are dying. Loads of nans are dead, so shut up. This is not important. I'm having a laugh. Shut up. Yeah. If you're listening to this podcast and you're upset by anything, shut up. Fuck off. You can't, you've come to us. Yeah. You've come to us. We. Uh, this is why, <laughs> this is mental, and you'll not agree with this, but I'm getting close to the point. The problem is, when comedy, live comedy is at its best, there's nothing like it. No. I'm saying that. But there's I mean. inconsistencies there that make it a difficult mistress. This, as long as he's had a coffee and a good night's sleep, is honestly, consistently, it's so, because it's it's mad. You don't have that you, in the room, like, uh, uh, you can't just hear some couple talking. Like, uh, no, well, what do you want from the bar? Like, oh, it's that, it's the freedom. How can... How can that be a bad thing? Like, we know what we, we think is funny and we get to do it. Like, there isn't anyone going, me. And then at the same time, if you're like, oh, these jokes aren't for me. If you can watch all that we've done and go, these guys are really offensive. You know we're fucking about. <laughs> listen, to, listen to when we really have a conversation. We're fucking really quite liberal fannies, really. Yeah. But we've got a sense of humor and we like making jokes about this shit. But you have come to us. Yeah. We we're, have, we're not on your TV. No. We're not on your fucking BBC. We've not come to your PTA meeting. <laughs> imagine this. Imagine this podcast got booked to do the PTA meeting. Oh, Mr. Adam. It's time to have a word with Adam and the nonce. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adam, what are we doing here? <laughs> what? The train inspector. Oh, yeah. Should I, yeah, we should tell our story. So, um, <laughs> on the way down to London... We're on the Avanti West Coast. I've hurt my ribs laughing. <laughs> I've, had, I've had like a... Go on. From Runcorn to uh, London, right? Avanti's now... The new Virgin. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and the train inspector was just the rudest fucking bellend in the world. Like, I didn't have my mask on because it's a two-hour journey and I am asthmatic and I said on the podcast last week, I can't do it. I just can't. Like, I can't breathe. It's just a thing and... I'm not, I'm not, like, I totally understand. If I'm going in a shop for five minutes, I'll put my mask on. I will. Because I'm not, like, trying to be a knobhead. But he come to our thing, he checked our tickets and said nothing. And then went on the fucking, the tannoy. By the way, we'll, Avanti, we'll give you a mic. Because the one they've got is, it's like he's got a megaphone, a megaphone, a megaphone from the 1920s. And it's just attached to, like, the fucking thing that Woody has in Toy Story. <laughs> So he's like, rrr, 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 and he done a full announcement. And then he come back in. He's this camp bald guy. 
dead tall. Oh. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> and he come in and he went, um, and I just wasn't in the mood for him. He went, uh, excuse me, is the tannoy not working in this carriage? And I went, no. I went, I, I didn't listen to it. I'm not listening. It's I, inaudible. I, I, and he went, well, you've got to have masks on. And I went, well, I don't actually, because I've got an ex- exemption. I'm asthmatic and I can't wear it for two hours. And he went, well, you shouldn't be on public transport then. I was like, oh, so how am I meant to get to work? Do you want me to fucking run to London, you stupid bald cunt? <laughs> and then I, I've learned my lesson with going to the internet about these things, right? From things that have happened in the past. <laughs> so I was like, let it go. But he couldn't. What did you tweet? <laughs> he tweeted Avanti West. It's time to have a tweet with Sensei Carl. So I tweeted. Giving shit to Avanti. I tweeted to Avanti. One of your train staff has just spoken to me like he found me sat in his fridge with my dick in his butter. <laughs> Genuinely one of the rudest, most condescending, bold men I've ever had the displeasure to converse <laughs> with at Avanti West Coast. Um, they replied. They did reply. They replied. He ha- said, sorry to hear about that, Carl. Uh, what did they say? Shut um, sh- up, you nonce. Yeah, just dead rude. Did, it, did the reply say, uh, at Sensei Carl? You can like, tell you're a linguist. I totally get everything, but we're miles away from everyone, and there's genuinely some people who just can't wear them. It was just such an audible ball. I don't... If he was a customer that had a go, then you'd be like, well, they're just uppity because they don't want to be wearing masks, and in their head, it's like, look, I'm doing it, why can't you do it? But that's also not... Like, in the co-op round, round our way, they're like, look, not everyone's um, medical problems are obvious, so please be respectful for the people that aren't wearing masks. I think some people are like, don't want to do it, which is yeah. annoying. It's making it annoying for the people who are like, I've got an asthma issue. I've got like, well, there's a girl at Laura's work who's got one fucking lung. I think it might have been on the Patreon actually where I fully explain the mask thing because I don't think we've done it publicly, but a combination of I've got asthma and because I was battered by a doorman when I was 17, I've got like a cut near the top of my nose and it scabs over. So I don't really breathe through my nose. I'm a mouth breather. Right? I'm such a fucking mouth. You're the same, aren't you? I feel like, like I've got a fucked up nose. So I, I, I struggle so for I breath for anyway. Reasons. Like, yeah. it's really quite shit. I'm, I'm going to have to go to the doctors or something and get this done because it's really fucking bad. Carl Donnelly's just had it done. He's yeah. just had, yeah. It's, it's horrendous. Looks but like, more Jewish. I'm not trying to be a dickhead. <laughs> Sorry, I was just being a dick. <laughs> that was too far. Sorry. I'll play the game. Chat. If I'm going in a shop, like we've been around town and I go to go in someplace, some shops are like, yeah, just come in. And I don't put my mask on, because if I don't need to, I'm not going to wear it. But like some of them go, could you put a mask on, please? Yeah, no problem. And I'll put it on if I'm only going to be in for a few minutes. But two hours on a bastard train, I literally wouldn't be able to breathe. It's not like you can go outside and get some fresh air. So, yeah. What a fucking... He was dead. And it, and he should know better. Shop. He should... Sorry. He should know, though. He works for Avanti. Yeah. He, he knows the not. people with You with shouldn't exemption. be on public transport. Oh, so... Ev- you just you just can't go to work. You just can't. Yeah, he's being a Rona Nazi, isn't he? There's, and his mate in the shop. What did I say? That was funny. So that I went to the shop and he'd already pissed me off by this point. Right? I mean, I'm like, that was dead rude. That wasn't it. He was a lot ruder than we're making out, by the way. He, like, it was bigger than this. Just, yeah, I don't want to go on about it too much. He, it was just such a condescending, horrible, like, sassy. You know that type of customer service where it's, overly nice which makes it the rudest thing well here's the thing sir right just listen sir i'm doing my job sir like that sort of it was that and it i hate that i'd rather him go put your fucking mask on dickhead and then i can go i can't make soz like i i could deal with that so much easier than what he did well he turned to me and went have you got asthma as well and i went yeah and he went of course you have but Mm -hmm. i've I've got a messed up nose so i've got a genuine but i went into the shop and the guy in the shop was almost as rude as that guy. So I walked in and he went, is there a reason you haven't got a mask? And I went, yep. That was it. <laughs> Put myself on the finger pay for them. I feel like, <laughs> I know where it's coming from. They're just going about it the wrong way. That's exactly what they we They could said. literally just go, sir, I'm really sorry, but just for everyone else's safety and my safety, we're asking people to wear yeah. masks. Yeah. And you could go, apologies, I've got a, an issue and I can't wear it. And then they, yeah. Then it's a more polite. It's the same conversation without the train, fucking arsiness. I'm going to write a routine about train conductors because train conductors, for a long time, as far as I'm concerned, have been the the biggest cunts in the world. Like I hate them. 
They're always condescending, power mad people who couldn't. Oh, there's some belters though, isn't there? The occasional character who's like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the shame. It's we'll be so rare along. though. But it's fun when it happens. And, and you know why they stand out? Because there's a load of arseholes. Train don't. managers want to be dormant, but they can't fight. That's what it is. They want the power of, <laughs> this is my thing and I can kick you out whenever I want. Yeah. They're audible. You ever seen a fit one? It's, it weirdly is quite arousing. You got to think when they're wearing like a like a she could like a Trans Pennine Express fucking badge, and like her hair's pulled back because she's fit, but she's in like business mode, so it's like in a in a bobble, and like the 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 blue work pants are a little bit too tight. Like it's a uniform that you have to be fit to make it look like. Have you have you been to IKEA? They've made everyone look like they work in the fucking Charlie and the Chocolate factory. They, everyone looks like fucking umpalumpers. It's the least forgiving uniform I've ever seen. If you if you remember a staff at IKEA and you can you look fit in that, you are a, a literal 10 when you get to jazz yourself up. I remember going over to Leeds, fit train conductor, Trans Pennine Express, did something to me like, she's like an air of authority, like. Have you got your rail card? Get your feet off that seat. You get your I told you about the time I got a fine for having my feet on a seat going from Chester to Liverpool this is ruining my fans <laughs> <laughs> have I told this on the pod have I told you before it's fucking ages ago if I have anyway I was going from Chester to Liverpool and those shit mazy tra travel trains right uh, rickety as fuck but like there's a seat and then a metal bit and then the other seat and I just had my foot on the metal bit right and this fucking train busy come over. You know, the ones who, like, they don't let do real crimes, but they can be the train ones. Yeah. Come over, he had his little camera on. They'd, they've never made that TV show, have they? <laughs> train busy. They the same tune and everything, eh? Train busy. Train busy. Arresting people on platforms. Go on. He come over and he read me, like, me Miranda rights. Right, so he goes. Uh, so you've got your feet on the seats there. That carries a maximum fine up to blah blah blah. Uh, I I do have the uh, information to tell you. You're not under arrest, and uh, <laughs> if it, you, you can choose not to say anything, but it may harm your defence if this goes to court or whatever. He, he done all that, uh, and I gave him all my information. And I ended up at, like it was meant to be like a sixty quid fine, but I just didn't pay it because it went to me dad's. And at the time, I lived in Chester. I wasn't talking to me dad, and it mounted up. I ended up with a fucking bailiff at my house, and I had to just give him. Cash at the time. It was horrendous. Um, but I keep going back to that moment because he told me I'm not under arrest and I have the right to remain silent. And, and you like, gave him the deets? Yeah, I was like, I could have just sat there until you I got to my destination and then fucked off. fucking self-grass. Yeah, grassed on myself. Imagine yeah. if I'd used that. If I'm doing... Not under arrest. Okay. <laughs> just, kept, just kept doing that. Meh. <laughs> Oh, you could just do an Elton John. Uh, do you remember when we hid from... We didn't hide. It's a shit train fantasy, by the way, sex-wise. Remember when you pretended on the train with the train inspector? Pretended that you were asleep? It was you. Oh, no, it was you. I pretended to be asleep. Yeah, oh, this was, was so fucking stupid. This was years ago. This was about eight, nine years ago when we were, you know, still adults and it's still quite bad. <laughs> this was so long ago. It was 21. So we just come up with this idea for no real reason. Me and Carl coming back from London, weren't we? Yeah. And we had a, a weekend of drinks, and you know, when you hung over and you got that stupid fun energy. So I was like, right, when the train inspector comes down, I'll pretend to be asleep. And you pretend you don't know me. You're by the window, aren't you? Right? Oh, yeah. So I'm leaning against the window. Like, <laughs> and the, the train <laughs> inspector comes to him and goes, uh, got your ticket. And gives it and she went, um, could you just wake him up for me? And he goes, Oh, I don't know him. Right. And she goes, Well, I need to check his ticket. Could you just give him a nudge? And he grabbed me and went, Hey! <laughs> <laughs> on this fucking pack train. <laughs> and I was like, What the fuck's going on? And I went, What the fuck are you doing? And the woman went, um, sorry, we were just trying to wake you up because I need to check your ticket. And I was like, oh yeah, no problem at all. Gave it and then proceeded to go back to sleep. Oh, you had the ticket all along? Oh yeah, I had my ticket. It was just... It was just <laughs> I a... thought you were trying to dodge the ticket. No. You just wanted to fuck with the woman. Yeah, yeah we just wanted to fuck with the woman. It's funny as fuck. 
Amazing. <sighs> Boys, we just need to send out a bit of love to a friend of the podcast and then we'll have a little interval. We've got we've got a guest coming on in the second half and I'm really looking forward to it. But Yeah, one of our weirdest originals, one of our day oneers. We're not going to name her because it's not really anyone's business, but we know she's having, uh, we'll say she's having some surgery today and that's as far as we'll go with it. And but we love you, mate. Yeah. And we're wishing you all the best. And we just hope that the fact that, you know. You just listen, all the, you, <laughs> yeah. when you hear this, you'll be recovering. And uh, yeah, I think everyone's thinking of you. So, mate, let's have a let's have an interval. That has uh, been a lot of fun, and I've got slightly hurty tits. Let's have a break, and then we're going to be back with Brennan Reese in a minute. What's happening, guys? Today's sponsor is Beer52.com. They are the UK's number one craft beer discovery club, and they've teamed up with us to give our listeners a free case of beer. That means you get eight free beers, an award-winning beer magazine, and a tasty snack as your first free order. And it's free. You pay nothing. You just pay the £5.95 postage and packaging. You'll then be a member of their Craft Beer Discovery Club, and they send you a different theme of beers every month. Past themes have been the beers of Belgium, the beers of Korea, California, all over the world. Every month, a new theme, and they're always a belter. You'll find craft beers that you'll never find on your own. And also, you can pause your membership at any time. So do us a favour, support the podcast, support our sponsors. Go to beer52.com slash word. That's B-E-E-R 52.com slash W-O-R-D. Every time you sign up, we get a little bit of money. So you get your free beers. There's a little bit of money to support the podcast. It's win-win. I'm a member. I love it. Let's get back to the podcast. We're we'll going to get some beers. Pause it here. Go and get some beers. B52. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please leave that in from the audio from the camera. <laughs> Welcome <You're> back. Being... <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> Can um, you do the face though? Uh, I just did. I did Elton John singing. I'm still standing. <laughs> the irony of a disabled person singing, I'm still standing. Is <laughs> yeah, you sat down. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Brennan Reese is here. I tell you what was nice today because we all did a gig together recently, didn't we, in Liverpool? Yeah. And uh, what, did you see the tweets? So no. I said I've got one of my mates coming in the studio today to be uh, one of my best mates in comedy coming in to be the guest on the podcast. And a girl who was there that night was like, uh, "When when are you getting this guy on? I, I need to know his name again so I can find his stuff and put a picture of me and you." <laughs> I really had a lasting impact. I was on <laughs> for a third of the show, and they went, "What's that?" Thing that was on in the middle. <laughs> What's that? What was that? He oh, looks like just, he's. Do not remember your name, I, do they? They just yeah. don't. We had someone on the. We sort of briefly mentioned this at the start of the podcast on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, <laughs> on an episode said, I really like the guy on the right, but I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> How have you found it? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'll take the view. I'm a whore for the views. It's the right guy. <laughs> Did you ever decide who was going to sit where, or was it like a natural thing? Are you it like Ant and Deco? Really, wanna? I wanted to be this side because I had the. I this is loosely this is like bloody June. We started doing sketches. Adam's sketch of this place about a month before we built it is weirdly spot on to how we 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 got <laughs> oh, like, similar. It's like, um, but I thought. We were going to have him in an armchair and the guest in an armchair, but I needed a table because of this. Because I've done, since the start of the podcast, I've had the drive of it. Now Carl's doing a lot, but I'm so used to having stuff. I've prepped and whatever. But then it felt better to have Adam on a desk as well. And then we put, we found this in like, where did you find this? I find this in an office clearance store. What so, even shape is that? So it's podcast hosting shape. <laughs> it was... It was it was more like a V than it is now. And you were meant, it's like an executive corner desk. So you're meant to sit there and then you've got like a V in front of you, you know, to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you meant to sit that side, but we found it and I was like, let's just cut the front off and paint it black. Cause this is like, stand, you know, like that horrible, like creamy yellow office stuff. Oh, it looks like a prosthetic leg color. Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> Heather Mills. <laughs> Do you know when you go like, why have you picked that? Like, it's not even tanned. Oh. It's. Here, I, here at yeah. Beige Company, we like everything beige. 
furniture, here at walls, average stuff. accountants. Uh, yeah. <laughs> here at <laughs> so this is all this has been spray painted and then glossed and then we found the sheet to go around it. But uh, what and then couch about? and then couch for the guests. Forty quid. That couch was from Bulky Bob's clearing store. And I, I mean, he I've been here for ten minutes and I've seen some of the clips. And I got on my way. I was excited but nervous because you've had like, like. You know, someone off YouTube has got loads. I've been here for 10 minutes and we're talking about a table that you found in a skip. And I've gone, <laughs> fuck, they're gonna, gonna struggle getting views on this one. No, no, no. We, oh, we, the we, views will come. We get a lot of shares off furniture nonces. They're like, oh, oh God. Really like shagging. Talk about the British Heart Foundation, Brennan. <laughs> if, you, if you were gonna fuck a, a, a furniture, yeah. you mentioned furniture, what would you have a go on? And we're off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, his own would you rather? He's fucking. Is that what? Oh. Um, I, I, you've got to go for the centre point of the couch. I think everyone had to go with that when they were a teenager, didn't they? Oh. What, down the back of it? No. So see that bit between the two cushions where your knee is. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, this bit that's full of cum. Yeah. Well, how, how do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, how do you get your dick there? <laughs> how do you get your dick there, though? You get erect. You get on your knees. On your knees. Yeah. What, in, in the very dead middle no, of the you, couch? You, so you, you kneel in front oh, of the couch. Oh, that bit. I thought you meant the really, like, down the crevice. Imagine, right, imagine that is Laura's butthole and she's facing the window. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> I'd be in a different it bedroom. It does feel like bum than fanny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, as a 13-year-old, you don't explore. The bum's not even an option. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Did you fuck furniture as a child? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Did you fuck a bit of furniture? Yeah. yeah. To the point of jizzing your little 13 year old knickknacks. I reckon the first. Oh, my mum's going to see this at all. As well. The first time I. Hi, ever- Brendan's mum. <laughs> Carry on. The first time I ever. She will watch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And oh, she'll oh, share one. it. And you'll be like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? I'll show it her later. <laughs> she. I remember the first time I ever, like, came. Yeah. And it was <laughs> <laughs> on my mum and dad's. <laughs> Five oh four. Have you hyped yourself up in the car? I've been. Got- in, in, what have you been doing? You look like you've come in like, whoa! This is what we pay for. And then we were like, yes. Yeah, so we got the table from here, and you've almost been like, this is disappointed. Whoa! Did you fuck a chair? Have you had a bit of beak in the fucking car park? I've never had a drug in my life. <laughs> I've just, but I have just been fixed. <laughs> <laughs> that was my drug. First honestly. time you came. Go Sorry on. for interrupting. First time I came, I think it's when Channel 5 became a thing. Oh, Can yeah. I just double check before we carry on? When you say the first time you came, do you mean the first time you came as in like something came out? Because the first time nothing happens, does it? And you just feel like you've broken. What? What? No, you don't have like a ghost spunk. First time I had a wank, nothing. I was like six or something. And six? <laughs> Six. Wow. Oh. You weren't six. You just had a failed piss. No, I no, I did. I, I I did it, and I had like a feeling. I was like, oh, that was nice, but not and came you out. You were a wank at six. I don't know how old I was. I didn't write the day down, but Mate. I was young. Like nothing came out. Mate. Nothing came out, but I felt all fuzzy. He was selling weed at eight. It's fucking <laughs> classic Dovecat memories. Like I remember being on the streets when I was two. It was a fucking. It was a, <laughs> there was an armed robbery of a fucking Tonka truck. He's, he he loves it. Yeah, yeah. I was shagging birds at seven, wanking at six. I was married with two kids at 11. 17. I was 17 before I lost my virginity. I've, I think I've told you this before. I had like a little mild depression when I was young because I remember like- So you had a wank at six. I don't you know if I was- selling drugs six. at eight, you were depressed by 10. Yeah, Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst Craig David cover of all time. <laughs> It's a <laughs> I was wank when I was six. Um, I had like a thing Jesus. where like, no. I was like 11 or something and I'd been wanking. I'd been wanking for time. You're dumb, mate. And like, <laughs> you know, like wanking. at school, like you're a wanker was an insult. And I remember walking home from school one day being like, I am a wanker. <laughs> like I'm a wanker. And it like got to me, like in me soul. I was like, but I am a wanker. Like everyone uses wanker as a put down and I am one of them. Well, so. when, when you're that age and like, you're a wanker and, and, you, and you're young enough to think you should say, no, I'm not. <laughs> like yeah. you only have to be like 16, 17 to go. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I've got a dick. Yeah, I, I struggled with that mentally for years. He didn't, he just, no, fucked, he just fucked stools. <laughs> Poofs, office chairs. Sorts. I'd You're go not around. Not allowed to call them that anymore. <laughs> 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 you 
but you can fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> it's encouraged, it's encouraged. So the first time you came. <laughs> the first, yeah, I think the first time I remember coming anyway, and you're gonna <laughs> remember coming. And what have you blocked out? <laughs> Tell us about church. <laughs> Tell us about church. Oh. My mind went to the exact same place where I was full of water. Oh. I um, I was on my parents' bed and they were downstairs. Oh, God, and there was a bright, old. Do like, you know when you have a special yeah. telly in your in your mum and like another telly, yeah. and Channel Five was on it. And I remember coming, but coming on a cushion, like a velvet cushion. Yeah, of, you fucking animal! But I didn't know what because all the things to jizz on. <laughs> A velvet cushion, mate. That's the end of that cushion. Yeah, isn't of it? course it is. But I didn't you know had what to... a wank on a mega bus, Dan. Yeah, I've had a wank, but on I a... didn't rub it into the mega bus. <laughs> what did you do with your jizz? I can't remember, but I think it involved my underwear. You just into your undies and just accepted that you were going to sit in your own jizz for hours. I had a wank on a mega bus. I've had a wank on a bus and a train. I have had a wank he on a train. He is the guest I've, I've always wanted. I, I, I told him this for the first time yesterday. I have had a wank on a train. I never mentioned this when you brought it up because I felt like bad, but I have had a wank on a train. Yeah. As I an think... adult, I've had a wank on a train. Good. What? Yeah. Right, there's too many stories going on. <laughs> Are they all involved? Velvet. The first time you can. Right. Velvet cushion <laughs> and, then, and just, then virgin. I, I had to turn it, just turn it up because you can't throw a cushion. You can't go downstairs with a cushion up your top. Yeah. So I just turned it over and left it. So that's that. What happened? I don't know. Never been brought up. Your dad got him fucking <laughs> shit for that. You know, what's your dad's name? Les. Les! <laughs> You've been working on the pillars again, love. Oh, Barbara, the snails. We've had a really bad, it must be snails. Close the windows. I told you, late what, you, summer. You can't have a go at me. Well, you could have a go at me, but it's embarrassing, isn't it? If you go into 11 year old's room with a rock hard cushion and go, what's that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Look at this, Brennan, you dirty bastard. This is velour. You filthy cunt. Mum, you're not even Irish. <laughs> I'm doing a Pete's cabin. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a wank on a train. As an adult? Yeah. Like, like. Or when you were six? No, like in the past sort of 18 months or two years. In the past 18 months? To two years. To two, oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, well those six months. Yeah, we can forgive as as it. As long as it's 20 months. <laughs> If it's 15, I'd be fucking disgusted. And also six months of those have been locked down, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm hungover, months, really. I, I need to wank. Right. Like I, I need <laughs> to do it. I know what you mean. It feels like you've got a demon in you. Yeah. And you're like, I have to get it's the bad awful. stuff so out. So I don't just do it on a seat like you did. Because you were just on the back seat, which is no disgusting. No one saw it. No one saw I it. I just go to the bathroom and sort of like, you know, like in porn, when at the end the girl's like, ah, I just, use, I imagine the toilet is the woman. <laughs> Do you? Why is it such a hard grip as well? When you, that, like mine's like a nice- It's a very thin piece. Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen style. Like, ooh, but yours is like, you're trying to rip the end off it. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I come into the toilet's mouth. Oh. oh. I'll tell me you just, what. Let me just- do this. Upset me. Upset me, nasty bitch. I'll tell you, oh. <laughs> it's Kane Brown. Um, I am- um, yeah, I came out the toilet and there was just like a, a middle-aged woman waiting to go for a wee and I couldn't look at her. No. I was like, but yeah, I assume she was going for a wee. Maybe she was just going to have a fap. You never know, do you? When you feel, when you've done it on public transport though, you feel like, do you know when you walk back to your seat and it's hot? You feel like everyone knows what you've just yeah, done. Everyone's just like, oh, and you're like. <sighs> yeah. In a virgin toilet. What, mm. Is that what you did it? Yeah. And the worst bit is there's that speech that goes on. Do you know what it goes? Don't throw like broken dreams oh, down there. But it doesn't tissues. say anything about jizz. Doesn't say anything about I jizz. I listened. I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> Fucking animals. I love it. And it's quite fun as well because you're tilting. At least I had Did the good grace to go to the bathroom. Did you do it in the bathroom as well? Yeah, well, I've done it. I've done, <laughs> I've done it several times, to be honest. How horny are you? Have you masturbated since we've had this conversation? <laughs> are you doing it now? Yeah. Just, Just rub rubbing myself up against the sofa. Like, oh. Um... The first time I did it was on a not normal train, but out in the carriage bit. And it was the bit, do you know where the two seats face each other? Where you put yeah. your feet on the seats? Just in that bit. And I come in a, a just a coffee cup. Oh. <laughs> I did. Brennan. I put the lid on it. It's not going to spill, but I, I just- Brennan. It's creams off. <laughs> I was about 14. <laughs> it's congealed. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Trying to empty a coffee out like that. Putting a knife in. <laughs> What do you think about Brexit? 
<laughs> do you know what? Right. It's like jizz in a cup. I don't know. I don't no, I'm, I was just joking. Good, because I, I don't follow I, it. Joking. I didn't vote. Jo I don't I, understand I, it. I, <laughs> I didn't literally want to go from jizz like, <laughs> in a coffee cup to Brexit. Talking about jizz in a coffee cup. Tell me about the uh, <laughs> Tories policy on Brexit. I got more oh. panic then because... I'm quite happy talking about wagging on public transport illegally, but when you talk to me about politics, I was like, oh God, I know fuck all about this. It's too oh. confusing. I'm well known as one of the, one of the best travel wank comedians, <laughs> but political satire is just beyond me. And frankly, distasteful. <laughs> I knew this was going to be a good episode, but fuck me, this is funny. I think I did it on the way. Do you remember when we went to Dubai? Yeah. I think I did it on that plane. On the plane? I think so. Oh, uh, hang on. Now. That's a seven hour flight. Mm. And I think the good people, even though the devout Muslims of Gulf Air or fucking Emirates, Emirates you know, with, I think Etihad, there's like, maybe. you know, I think they understand. But I think, you know, on a virgin train from fucking Stoke to London, <laughs> you should probably just hold it in. When it's and, a, what, and then do it at when Houston. It's, when it's yeah. the toilets are free now. <laughs> I'm here, the capital. <laughs> I'm not paying thirty p for a wank if I can get it for free. But I just think I think on a on a on a mammoth fly, I almost think there'd be like a gentleman's agreement. Like, oh, there should be a wank room. Allah. There should be like a room to go to the toilet and then another one to go have a wank. <laughs> what like are they have the prayer bit in in airports? Yeah. <laughs> you go, <laughs> then you go in the other one. It's just loads of men like oh, on the knees. Oh. Hey, welcome to Dubai International Airport. Here we have a praying section. Why is there a Japanese man have, working there? Here, no, it's, uh, <laughs> this is my Middle Eastern uh, generic. It's and here we Japanese. have smoking area, and the, here is Brennan Reese's VIP wanky room. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> I'm not a fucking bastard of a flight. <laughs> yeah, but for those long stopover, do you know when you're doing four hours and you're going to Australia or whatever? Because yeah, yeah, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we know those Australian flights. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you done internationally? Where's your, what's your sort of international comedy CV? So if you don't know Brendan, by the way, he's a fucking brilliant comedian. Started around the same time as, as Adam. Yeah, we yeah. started at a very similar time, and then you sort of took off a bit quicker than me. You were doing the clubs when I was still doing sort of newer act spots and stuff. Um, and then we didn't really see each other for about a year or two at one point. But then we were just, all doing that middle bit, you know, where they have like a new person on. Yeah, where you you never see your mates for a couple of years. I until, didn't see Steve Shanyaski for five years. It's mad, isn't it? Because we were with the same agent and the bookings would come from the same people and they'd be like, right, headliners, Dan and Steve. Yeah. So we'd be like, oh, Steve was here last month or whatever. It's weird yeah. how you get in a little lane. Well, yeah. we were the mid lacks of that. Like we were getting those 15 minute ones in the middle for like 50 and 100 quid and whatever. And we didn't see each other for a while, but then you get to a point where one of you is headlining or comparing or whatever. And and then, yeah, we did Dubai together, didn't we? And we <laughs> Joe, it's weird. We don't see each other that often. When no. we do, we get on dead well, really good mates. But he brings out the naughty, like we've got been in trouble together. Like consistent trouble more times with him than with anyone, if, if, including Carl. Yeah, because he's- Like Bren trouble pair meeting ratio with me and you. <laughs> Brenner's dangerous because he looks like he's just like fallen out of the CBB studio. And actually there's a fucking gremlin. There's evil in there. Inside, That's you've a, talked about this with me where you say, if you said the things you say in life on stage, it just would be wrong. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fit your, hi, I'm Brennan and everything. <laughs> like, can we, can I tell the stories? Yeah. Right. So <laughs> one, what about him has given off a vibe of like, let's keep this like funny, One night, friendly. this was years ago. I mean, I could talk about wagging on public transport, but if you say I hate bacon in fucking Dubai, <laughs> I'm going to be limited. So for like, for, for at one point me and Brennan were both uh, single men and, uh, Later that night, we ended up sleeping in his car in <laughs> Liverpool. Right, so this is a true story. He would parked his car by Lime Street Station in a um, like after six free public parking bay. And if you don't know Liverpool, really well known, very very safe area of Liverpool. <laughs> Not in any way rapey. Yeah, you can get car parking spaces, prostitutes, and cocaine all within a stone's throw of each other. <laughs> and it was. <clears throat> You'd done a gig for Hot Water. I don't I th think I had done. Or maybe, I don't know whether I was, was I on? I think you had, because I, if I'm right, and I might be wrong, you'd done their gig, and I came back from Alexander's or the Laugh-In or something in Chester, and I just popped in, because it used to be in the Holiday Inn over the road from, and I was like, you're right. And uh, I was like, do you want to come for a drink? And we, a few of us went out, and we were in Igloo, which has since become Ink. And we saw, like, a, a few of our friends work there. We got a few free drinks and stuff, and... We got talking to these three girls. Now, 
Look at his beautiful little face, right? Oh, yeah. Little Two cher- of them cherubic. wanted to fuck him. Like, bo- and we're like, we will both fuck you. And then there was the other one who Honest was to willing God. to fuck me. So they're You say willing, she went... <sighs> <laughs> but that's how, she, but, that's how she chatted him up. She went, well, we all can't have a go on him. But... <sighs> That was my reaction too. Like there was total ambivalence from both me and him. We're like, should we just because they're gonna? Oh, right, my God, we the it's two trolls at the back. So depressing. They would have got like locked horns. Literally, they were like, <laughs> like they just were bit. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have been uh, nice to look at. It would. Yeah, it would. It wouldn't have been one that I'd have put in me Hall of Fame. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It was, a, it, would have been, it was a pre-season friendly that you don't really give a shit about and no one's trying the best. Yeah, you just don't want to yeah, get injured. Yeah. Was <laughs> it the, the Singapore Suzuki Cup? Yeah. Is that what, it was yeah. an international friendly one. If you come back without any injuries, you just go, it doesn't matter what the result was. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, he did a good 60 minutes. We brought him off. <laughs> <laughs> we um, They went, oh, we're staying in an apartment around the corner. Do you, do you want to come back? And we were like, yeah, sounds. So we walked back. We didn't say, we weren't like, yeah, so we were yes. like... <laughs> Like we were, I think so we giggled naughty. around a corner. <laughs> and we walked back and we went to go in and there's this security guard on like a fucking power trip and he goes, not allowed guests. Everyone who's registered is allowed. No one, no one, no guests allowed. So we were like, come on, mate. Just be a man and let, like you can see what's, it's their room. They've asked us. Please, yeah. Come on. I'll Help even us. let you have a go with that one over there. <laughs> She's like, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I need to do <laughs> to get these boys in? <laughs> Like, come on, don't be that guy. Just don't be. And he was like, no, you can't come in, you can't come in. So one of the girls come over to me. He's still arguing with the guy. and goes, run round the back of the building and I'll let you in the fire exit, right? Which wasn't a youth. <laughs> <laughs> Big girl, run round the back. <laughs> Imagine it was called the fire exit. <laughs> So I, I, I'm going to Brennan, come on, we've got to go. And he's like, no, I'm going to talk to him together. And I was like, come on, we've got to go. So we get outside and I was like, we've got to run round the back. And it's like in the middle of like a long block of buildings. So you have to go right round the street to the back. And we're like, I was like, we're going to get in, we're going to get in. <laughs> run round to the back and we got right to the back door. And the security guard was just stood there just, do you think I'm fucking stupid? <laughs> it literally walked about four steps. Yeah. He'd, he'd, he'd gone Did you from- not get in? No. Oh god! So me and him went and slept in his car in Liverpool. I live in Liverpool. <laughs> you know. Also, just you've you've missed out the bit where you genuinely thought, "Can we climb this?" Because <laughs> because every every lad who's like, "Listen, you we're about to get is. laid." <laughs> what floor did they say? Like like they were in the window, like, like, like the balcony. The weren't they throwing uh, Pringles at us? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> hey, yeah. ice carbs, come on! It'll be like fathers for justice. You can do it. <laughs> Literally, just fucking sticking your erection into every, like... <laughs> Fathers for justice or perverts for puss puss? <laughs> you are absolutely on fire today. Jesus. I've not heard the term puss puss. No. Since I was at Pets at Home in 2003. <laughs> Honestly, if this was like a fucking Olympic event, like, Sada would piss test him. He is so full of Costa, it's unbelievable. <laughs> And I, t- I can he tell went to me before, you know, when you've had a coffee, and I was like, I haven't even said I've had a coffee. And he's like, You've had a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he keep, with that when lad. he's had a fucking big, big, big coffee, he keeps looking at me like, <laughs> It's like fucking scary. That's what we were like running around the fucking building. Like, <laughs> oh, so you went to Dubai together? Yeah, we went to Dubai together. Oh, those foreign trips are mental, aren't they? Why? Especially when you're a young comic, you're like, <laughs> sorry, you're going to pay the flights and pay his food and pay his money to go so far away. Okay, yeah, I'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think I I've would. done Dubai the year before and I did Dubai with two other comics, an American guy called Lewis Ramey and Jojo Sutherland. And I love Jojo. I don't really know Lewis, but I, I love Jojo. But they're both 52 years of age. They were at the time. That, like... <laughs> And I was like, I got there and I was like, what day are we going to the water park? And they were like, I can't do a fucking water park. I just want to sit in the hotel for two weeks. And I was like, that, like I love the Laughter Factory. Gail, who runs it, is great. It, the Duncan and Ken, who look after you, it's, you're really well looked after. The gigs are fun. You get looked after food and drink wise and all that. But towards the end of the run, she was like, we normally leave it like two years before we bring a comic back. But would you come back next year? Because you write a lot of new stuff. I've seen it on you. And I was like, yeah, look, can I be cheeky? I'll come back if I can, like, pick one of the other acts. Oh, mate, totally. I've turned down a foreign trip just on the, like, 
Like, who else is going like, nope. No way. Well, yeah, like, but Bahrain sounds nice, but that doesn't look good. Two <laughs> weeks is a long time to be with people who don't want to do what you want to do. So I text Brennan, because I was like, she was like, yeah, but, you know, we've got standards. Here. They used to have the comedy store book those gigs, and she books them herself now, because there's been, like, a massive economic change in Dubai, and they had to cut back on costs. So she was like, I'll book it myself. She's like, you know, the standard of acts we have, and I was like, well, he plays the store, and he's done live at the Apollo. So I feel like, do you reckon? I feel like that is a good enough thing. <laughs> let me just let me just try Michael McIntyre. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He's not up for it. You fucking idiot. Let's get us out. <laughs> so yeah, I asked Brennan. He was like, yeah, and I just put them in touch. And then we went in November last year. Was it last year? Yeah, twenty nineteen. It was fun. seems so long ago. It seems like about five years ago. But yeah, there's a picture of me and him in uh, you know those dinghies. Oh, I got stuck in a dinghy at the water <laughs> got park. Stuck in a rubber rig. Oh, I'm stuck in a dinghy. Oh, there's so many things you want to see in your lifetime. And I didn't realise, like a shooting star and you in a fucking rubber dinghy. I had to help him out of it. Like, you know, we nearly got our hands cut off because they thought like we were gay. in like the dip, but it has got a hole all the way. Well, I, as I tried to get out, I slipped and my legs went through it and I was too fat, so I got stuck in the hole. Is there a picture? Yeah. Oh, there's a picture. We paid to have the picture. So, that, you know, the people that come around at um, fun fairs and that, and they go, oh, do you want a picture? And then you pay 70 quid to have a picture at the end. We paid just to get him in the looking like the filling of a donut. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Can we tweet it later? Oh, absolutely. Oh, there's one picture from the same day where I'm going fucking ham down the side. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah. You really did make, make yourself look like. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, like shit, it's not on my Instagram. We it, take we take them out to Dubai every twelve months well, or so. <laughs> they love it. They really love it. Oh bless him. <laughs> oh, you can't quite see it, but Adam's fucking. You can slide this in. Oh, there's Sorry. some there's some good fucking tits there. Yeah, that's the stuff. nice thing about because I've got in, into my thirties, and I when you probably both met me, I was <laughs> slender man. So I was a bit nervous about going to the water park, but then it was going to be with you and Rich Wilson. And I thought, I will, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> because you've lost loads of weight, but you're not, like, now people are like, whoa, you look great. Yeah. But. What they mean I, is you look better. You look better. But <laughs> you if, don't look as bad. You look less shit. Yeah, yeah. That's what they and mean. And I think right? I can say this 10 years into knowing you. If I look like that, people would be ringing me mum. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same joke. It's so good. Is, is Brennan like, is Brennan having like a steroid based treatment? Oh, fucking brilliant. But I've become self conscious now because I used to be so skinny. Because you went through like. You, oh, I've, the, been, I've been up and down and I'm on the up again. But what was that? The Cambridge food? Oh, do you I've remember done, when you were I've selling been, shakes? No, no. And that? I've done I jogging. Oh, I've done no. full on fucking Cambridge weight loss. I've done like the, which is basically like posh, posh slim fast. And now I'm creeping back up. But you, you were like indie, indie kid thin. Yeah, I was like, sort of like third world kooks ill. Yeah, yeah, that I like, I remember like being on a bill with you. You looked you. like a bisexual on the front row of Glastonbury. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you did. Being, being, on, <laughs> being on a bill Show with you with some of like <laughs> the northern heavyweights. And I mean like figuratively heavyweight and also like literally big lads. And then you with like skin tight jeans that they couldn't get over the fucking wrist <laughs> is just, uh, and, and that sort of comedy's changed like that. But it, 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 there is a lot of like, thanks very much, thank you. Like the big lads. And then like Brennan's like, hey, you're right. <laughs> Just sort of like mincing and flouncing about. There was a moment about two years ago, I had to get rid of my like spray on skinny jeans and I thought, this is it. And it was horrible. Like, you didn't know, the bag wasn't very big, but it was, <laughs> it was, it just felt like, oh, I'm becoming, I'm becoming one of them fat comics. You're not becoming a fat comic. <laughs> but I could do. I can't tell you right now how much, right? There is not many things I want to see more in the world than you get like Freddie Quinn level of fat. I mean, I wouldn't let it happen. That is, that must hurt. I'm friends with Freddie, but that must be an effort to fucking get out and about. Because he is. Oh, Freddie. He's, so oh, Freddie, but he's fat, isn't he? He tells me all the time he's gutted that I'm not as fat anymore. Because he feels, he said misery loves company. I this, remember, isn't a one, this isn't a one-way street. But if once. you got like massive, like that'd just be the best thing. Like imagine him dead fat. Wouldn't you feel good about yourself? Oh, I'd be grateful. Yeah. I'd be awful. Yeah. But I remember one time, I think we were out of summer. And Freddie said to you, you're fatter than me. To me? To you. Yeah. And you weren't having any of it because you're not. <laughs> Close, but you're not. <laughs> but he believed it. He was going, 
no, you are. Yeah, it's I'm like, just taller. Yeah. And you're like, you're not even that much taller. <laughs> it's literally like like watching fucking seven year olds go, I'm taller than you. No, you're not as tall as me. You're like, Doing it that. doesn't matter. You're both yeah. seven, you little shit. Let's lie on our backs fatter. and go stomach to stomach. No, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, but weirdly, uh, with girls, I can't, skinny little, skinny. Things. Skinny little girls, you nearly said there, didn't you? Skinny, you women. Said skinny, skinny women. little girls. Oh no, that's my type. Like a fucking skinny little girls. Yeah, Not a little bit, a little bit. Little of girls. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not little, like petite women. Yeah. Over the age of, I don't know what my limit is anymore. No, as in like little. How, how old are you? I'm thirty three. Right, so twenty three and forty three. That's you can't go. Well, you can't go, but I thought you could go. I thought you can punch up as much as you want. No, I mean, do you, you can't want punch to? Down. Do you want to? Do I want to go higher than forty-three? Uh, I don't. I don't have a need to. But if the right forty-five-year-old came along, no. But you have got a top-end limit. Well, I'm- Brennan, Brennan, uh, come and put my teeth in and then give us a good old bang in. Like, oh, honest to God, if I was a single man. And a old, like, say, an eighty-five-year-old incontinent woman Fuck said, "Off, go on, it's Christmas." <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd take off the Santa beard and be like, "This one's for the." I'm, I, like, I'd film it. Yeah. What for content? Yeah, for content, two-minute video. I'd, I'd fuck an old, old, old woman. I think I would. You, you know, would for a laugh. I actually think I would. Not like regularly. No, I would like not I regularly. I wouldn't. I was about to say text her back. I wouldn't fax her <laughs> the next day. Yeah. No, like, no, honestly. but I would. I would fuck her. I'd fuck an old. How woman. old? Would you give her three rings when you got in? <laughs> <laughs> I give her three rings when you got in, just to let her know. Like, hello, love. I'm inside you. Right. I oh, got there. All right. Oh, no, lovely. Would you like a cup of tea? I think yeah. it'd be weird. I think it'd feel different. Really? Yeah. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. Do you think an 85 year old might feel a touch different? I think it'd feel like, do you know when you, under your sink, how you've got a carrier bag full of carrier bags? Yeah. I think it'd feel like fucking <laughs> Oh, he's got his, he's fucked his carrier bag pile. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would do it just to be able to like, you know, life is a buffet and I'm here for all the entrees. That's not a good bit of the buffet though, is it? <laughs> yeah. That's like at the very end, you know, when it's like 11.30 yeah, like, p.m. Is that a samosa or is it something else? Is that calamari or onion rings? <laughs> I want to know what it tastes like. I won't do, I won't be doing that. You wouldn't, you, what, you wouldn't dive? No, I would not. Why? Are you messing? Why? Like, it's all right putting your widget in it, but to, to taste, you know. Battery acid. Yes. Yeah. I don't even think it'd be battery, it'd be... <laughs> It'd be like sulfuric acid. It'd be, oh, it wouldn't God. be right. How the fuck did you get out of Muslim Dubai alive, you two? <laughs> One overheard conversation in like a Dubai Pizza Hut. You could have been imprisoned for life. We did nearly, he nearly got me killed by a doorman last year. Should tell that one in the film. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a doorman bad you. Why were you trying to like crack onto his Do you nana? want to tell us your version of the story? Cause it'll be slightly different. It was- Is this th- where we went into the beer? The pump, beer, it's called beer engine. engine. Yeah, yeah, beer engine or so whatever. So me, Binti, Binti was there too. And the entirety of Hot Water Comedy Club staff are all barred for life from beer engine. And it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> I think I were in the wrong. No, I don't think we were. Absolutely not. But whenever I walk past, I feel like I'm about to get my head kicked in. Yeah. So we go in and I'm with some mates and you'd come in after the, the hot water show and we wanted some food. So I said, can I order a pizza? And they said, yeah. I said, oh, can I get it to order to the bar? And the guy was like, a bit of a knob. And he goes, yeah, if you want. So the thing comes over, it's on a paddle and I'm eating the pizza and the guy goes, you can't eat it at the bar. And I went, well, I've ordered it to the bar. Why can't I have it to the bar? And he goes, no, you're not allowed. Um, so move it. So I picked it up from the bar and ate it. Stood at the bar. Stood at you, the bar. You hovered it slightly over the bar. Well, there was no tables for you, you see. Yeah. So it wasn't like, I think that's why you did it. You yeah. went, look, I haven't, there's no tables, but can I just order food to the bar? And they were like, yeah. And then they took his money, gave him a pizza and said, you can't eat that at the bar. So he <laughs> drunkenly went, well, I'm no longer at the bar. <laughs> yeah. And he literally, the guy just went, kick him out. And the doorman just grabbed him. Didn't care that the pizza went everywhere and just marched him out the fucking door. Oh. Face into the door. I think you might have missed a comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. That seemed mental. 
So uh, let's just go through the story so far. Brennan is quietly eating a, a snack. <laughs> And he's like, I'm so sorry, sir. There seems to be no spaces around. Next minute, someone broke his jaw with a knuckle duster and fingered him as they threw him through a window. And now let's track back and have more truth. <laughs> so, so what happened was I get this thing when I'm drunk where I go, I feel like I'm invincible. So I'm eating the thing and the guy goes, you're not allowed to do it. And I went, I'm not at the bar. So we had a bit of a to and fro. He just sort of goes, fucks off. <laughs> And I finished the pizza and I put the paddle on the bar and then I call him over and I go, that pizza was delicious. And he went, you're being a cunt. And I went, well, we've got something in common then. Oh, and then mate, that is, can I just give you a round of applause for that? That is beautiful control. And then- I did forget that bit. Suddenly- my face is in the front door of the engine, beer engine or whatever it's called. I still think it's an overreaction on their part. They're being Belen's. You can see why they're slightly annoyed because they've probably dealt with Belen's that day, that week. But what composure to be like. <laughs> but we're stood outside because like we left obviously with them. We weren't just going to leave him. And uh, like Binti's talking to them and so am I. And he's like, what have we been kicked out for though? Cause like the dorm, cause the guy on Sass. Cause the guy on the bar's a knob, and then you you sort of backed off because we me and Binti can just go over there because the guys knew me as a comic and knew Binti was from Hot Water, so I'm talking to the doorman and then the li you know the little doorman who's always the angriest one, the ratty one, got right the in the face, Russell. yeah, but I knew he was filming, I knew he was like just filming in case it kicked off, we were gonna have like the the evidence of it. So I, I had all the confidence of whatever happens to this on camera. So he's in my face. He's like, I'll fucking kill you. I'll fucking snap your neck. And I was like, please snap me neck. Please punch me in the face right now. I, was, I, I had my hands behind my back. I'm like, look, I'm just talking to you. I haven't done anything wrong. I've left because you've kicked me mate out. But I don't think you should have been kicked out. And I'll fucking kill I was like, okay, we'll kill me neck. Even said, come round the court. Like, who's doing that going, oh, Okay, Let's come around the corner, down that alleyway. I'll get you I'll back in you. the back door. <laughs> and you went round and there was girls throwing Pringles like, fucking hell lads, we've been waiting years. <laughs> Climb the wall. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Gruffalo's dying for a shack. <laughs> oh, yeah. He brings out the worst of me, but the best at the same time. Did the bouncer do anything? No. Did the you literally stand it up? The, the thing is, guys, when I'm angry and when I'm upset, like, this eye is quite terrifying. So when you're that close, you know, I think he shit himself. I think he was like. Do you know what I've noticed? When you get angry, they go like that one comes back. Uh, yeah, it's like a periscope. It's very and focused. Go, yeah. And then at the end, it snaps back. Yeah. So you know it's finished. <laughs> very focused. It's like when I'm pissed. Like Mad Eye on Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is that I, what happens? That's why I'm better at snooker when I'm drunk as well. Because the alcohol puts my eyes straight and I'm like... Do you think that's like a genetic thing? Like almost like a survival of the fit? It's like... like well, it's it, a lazy eye. It's, it's a, lazy. It's not that it doesn't work. It can't be asked. Uh, it can't be asked. But when it's <laughs> fucking game time. <laughs> yeah. So out on the Serengeti, the rows of like... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like prehistoric Adam Rose were like, fucking hell. Blah, blah, like, blah, blah, the big eyebrows. <laughs> and then fucking sabre tooth. Like, fuck <laughs> His, his ancestors were like, a oh, fucking twat, a saber tooth. <laughs> fucking snap, you big tooth cunt. Can I ask you a question? I've always wanted to ask you this. You and there's this a few- This will be great. There's a few like lazy eyed comedians. Yeah. Do you see like that? Oh, you see what? Do you see, do you see less? No. How? Well, it's not really a tiny eye, this one. I imagine some of the crossy ones do. Yeah, but if I go cross-eyed. Yeah, but I'm not cross-eyed. I've got a gammy. -eyed. I've got like a gammy eyelid, which sort of pushes it a bit. But is it not that? No. I can see everything. I know Dan's there. I know you're No, there. I know, but I can you can't. See the lamp. But can you see pasty, pasty, salt, pepper, chicken? Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe you. That guy's a good peripheral. Yeah. He's made it work for himself. I'm not like a fucking horse at the Grand National. <laughs> they put blinkers on, so I just go right down the fucking middle. He's not got his blinkers on. Look at him. He's up. Just doing circles in a field. 
<laughs> I've always wanted to know. No. Well, have it's you just... got? Have you got any like? Because you look like a fine specimen of a, uh, a transgender man. Mm. <laughs> what? Um, have you got any like secret ailments and little things? I've not got a foreskin. Okay, we're gonna have an interval now. <laughs> <laughs> were you born without it or has it been? No, it's been. Co- he's got, uh, what, what he hasn't got a foreskin either. Have you not? When did you get a cut off? As a kid as or a recently? Baby. As a baby. Who does that? Jews. It's factual. Hello. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> I, was, I was eight, seven, seven well, yeah. years old. Yeah, eight. Do you know why? My dad uh, had to have it done when he was 19. And my dad was... Uh, As in, like, t- he had to have it done. Or he goes, I've just got to have it oh, done. Everyone's <laughs> doing it. It's 1970 and this floppy thing has got to go. <laughs> um, he's... He, <laughs> That was a really good impression of my dad. If anyone's met my dad, they'd be like, you really nailed him. You know, that, that retired civil engineer. <laughs> From Preston. Guys, let's build a bridge. What your dad did? He was a civil engineer. Yeah, yeah and he was, uh, you know, active. And um, he, he, this isn't a patron episode, is it? No. <laughs> And he's a great dad. The Patreon episodes, we get a little bit, we, we let a few more details out. <laughs> Is it like no old bad? Oh, it's yeah, yeah. quite ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, this this one's the refrained one. <laughs> and he, a he, got, he got like an infection in his foreskin and they were like, listen, this has got to go. And at 19, I mean, that is pretty much peak horniness. He got... He Not had, with Adam, six. Yeah, well, obviously <laughs> it's different for our, our lid. But uh, yeah, yeah, he, and it's like a three month recovery. Is it? Where they basically pull it off, chop it, pull it back, and then sew it on. Isn't it? You did that like me, Barber, then. <laughs> yeah. Pulling it up with a comb. <laughs> a little mirror at the <laughs> end. Oh, oh, the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mate, oh, like the back. In the synagogues, it's like a fucking. They've got a good technique. Like a what, Turkish barber. What, like when you watch like Chef's yeah. Table on Netflix and they go, Whoa. pull, chop, sew, don't go in the bath. Yeah. I know I'm hungry 19. now because all I can think of is pork chops because you just said pull and chop in me brain, but that sounds but like pork. 19. What, after this, you mentioned synagogues. <laughs> <laughs> can they not have pork? No. 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 That's the main Jewish thing. I don't know anything that, about them really. No pork. Love God is second. I, I don't Saturday's really off. Saturday's off. Saturday's off. Uh, they, see, they the thing with, the thing fixtures. with the Jewish community <laughs> is there's not really any in Liverpool and I've never really had to learn much about them. Have you never stumbled across, like, you've been press witch, haven't you? Stumbled across a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Jew. Isaac, get off the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> Tripping over ringlets. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, innit? This is the episode that ruins everything. Shalom, that we've brothers. Done. And I'll be, I'll be glad of it if it is. Yeah. I'll be like, badge of honour, because there's been some shit said in the past. <laughs> But you know when you stumble across a press witch and you go, what fucking year am I, am I in? Like, I've got, I've got, I've genuinely, this sounds like I'm being a dick. I've got friends from press witch who are Jewish. Like full yeah, on. My, my Do mate. you know any no, Jewish not people? Fucking, how am I mates <laughs> with, is, is it Hasidic Jews? Like clearly like Belle and her family are Jewish, but they're not, I let, I let them be mates with like, yeah, that Dan Nightingale, that Northwest comedian, we're really good mates with him. She's one of my mates, we used to go clubbing. She's fucking brilliant. Oh, so you're saying you'd I never went, be been, friends with a Hasidic Jew? I've been to, I, I, I'm saying, I don't think they want to be friends with me. I think it's quite a close knit sort of- <laughs> Oh, you have to escape if you want to leave. You Do can't yeah. just go. You can't move to Wivington. Why? Yeah. You've got to run off. Because they'll get you back. Because they go, you're part of the gang. It's like the Bloods and Crips. Is it? Yeah, it's just yeah. like the Bloods and Crips. <laughs> like, exactly the everyone's same. got a hat. Everyone's got the colours on. Yeah. You can't leave. You really? can't leave. They're the, yeah, they're, they're pretty hard line. But there's also a lot of people who are just- How did you get out? Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they let just... one every few years go. <laughs> this guy doesn't suit hats. <laughs> But I've been to a bat mitzvah. I've been to have you? Yeah, Bell's daughter's bat mitzvah. Did in, they lift the chairs up in Presswich? Say bar mitzvah again. Bat mitzvah. Bat, bat mitzvahs. Yeah, well, I can't even a say bat mitzvahs for the girl. Oh, is bar it bar mitzvahs th- for the boy? Oh, I thought you just said it wrong. Well, yeah, mit- you were re- well, you were fucking the piranhas were saying. <laughs> See bat mitzvah again. I don't know why you went all Pulp Fiction. Bat mitzvah. Um, yeah, it's good fun. Well, Did they get fun. levered? Uh, no, it's not my memory of it. Oh. But, it, but you know how I wear hats all the time? She was like, yeah, everyone has to wear yarmulkes, but you always wear hats. So that's the thing. You don't have to wear the skull cap. I just turned up in a trilby. 
and looked like a fucking moron. <laughs> but every, it was Could abso- you wear a beanie? It was absolutely amazing. I just wore my trilby. Could Could you wear a beanie, though? You can wear any hat. You just have to wear any hat. Well, define hat. Like, all right, okay, so you don't want to turn up in a St. Patrick's Day Guinness sponsored green fucking hat. Like, birthday hat with candles on. That. Hello, dear. I fucking love a bad mitzvah. Now, come on, let's get this shit done. I got a fucking point waiting at O'Neill's. Yeah. It, like, can it, you have the one with the cans and the straw? Yeah. <laughs> A duff, uh, a Simpsons duff. duff hat. How to not get invited to the synagogue ever again? It's covered. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask. Hi, it, Belle. How are you, mate? You're all right. She listens to the pod. As a bald man, yarmulkes they usually grip them to their hair as well, don't they? Yeah. Like, what would you? They glue it. Glue oh. it. Yeah. A bit of crit stick. Tip tap tape. Glue it. Yeah. yeah, wig glue. I bet don't you, fucking glue it. I bet you anything. Anything. I bet, I bet, it's, glue I bet it's wig glue. Yeah, but then what if you need to take it off? Don't you take it when off you, when you go for the shit or something? Or do they not throw them up at the end, like graduation? <laughs> there was, it's so many mixed things in here, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Ha, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Muscle tough. <laughs> and then it freezes like a 1980s university. <laughs> and then the credits come up. Do you take your jacket off when you go for the shit? Have we spoke about this before? Honestly, can I just say, tremendous link there. <laughs> and as a colleague and a friend, to see you develop with me together as a broadcaster is quite something. He was like, where now. are we taking this? How can we take this? It's gone very Jewish and we've really skirted the lines. Do you, uh, do you take your jacket off for a shit? Touche, sir. It made sense. And I'm glad we're away from the synagogue. Um, yes. So if you went for the shit, if you were out in the pub now, if you were on a day out and you dressed like this, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Jacket off for the shit. Oh. You'd have a shit in a pub? I think, yeah, of course. I have got IBS, and if I need to shit in your back garden, <laughs> I'm shitting in your back garden, and there's nothing I can do like, about it. Why is Adam here? Yeah. I need to shit in your back garden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You live nowhere near it. We're going to lose the deposit on the fucking bouncy castle. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you not shit in public places? Mm, no. Can you hold the shit in? Sometimes you have to. Yeah, I've left places Adam, sooner Adam, than I need to. A lot. I just keep touching you, sorry, mate. <laughs> I uh, I've heard touched you like three more times than I ever have. Um, it's it, it, you. Not everyone has your four yeah, seconds till go time. Yeah, no, I can hold it in a bit, but like when I when it's time, it's time. But you take your jacket off, though, don't you? You're yeah. going to work. Where'd you put it if you go into the pub? Put it you over your head because I can't face what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a little hook. There's a little hook because a gentleman derobes for a tweet. Well, a lot of the time the hook's quite low because I use a lot of disabled toilets because they're just better, aren't they? Yeah. Well, got... put it on the thing, the arm thing, fold it over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah, what yeah, it's yeah, for. Like nice Did you take thing, a t-shirt yeah. off as well? Like a bare knuckle boxer going for Depends for a... on the t-shirt. I love having a nude shirt. Do you know when you're ill? <laughs> <laughs> when, you're proper... <laughs> when you're properly ill and the backs of your knees are sweating and you go... <laughs> And you peel yourself out of your fucking... <laughs> yeah. It just looks like someone's put a crash test dummy on a fucking yeah. toilet and you're going... <clears throat> oh, yeah. And you sit for ages and think... Oh, worst. The worst poo is when you get in the shower, you've been in there a minute, and then you go, oh, I really need a poo, and you've got to get out wet. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. And then you sort of slide over to the toilet and your wet thighs hit the toilet. You go, you do a plop and you're like, oh, there's no point See, wiping. I would towel dry and then shit and then get back in the shower. That literally contradicts everything I've heard about your IBS. <laughs> no, but like, I, Got get time like to- I get like a minute's notice. It's not like it's coming out your bum all now. Unless, right. yeah. So it's like the IRA ring you up and go, you're going to have a shit. It's exactly what it is. I've got a terrorist bowel. You've, you've got one minute. Well, old school terrorist, not these new ones who just do it. You know Inconsiderate. I mean? Yeah, you're talking about the considerate terrorists who give you a minute to fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I do get a bit of warning. Like, there's certain foods I have that, like, if I have a KFC, I put a timer on my phone for 46 minutes. Because in 46 minutes, 46 minutes. <laughs> Ask him. No, it's so good though. I didn't want to do it. Forty six it, minutes. The way, it's the way you know he makes is? up bullshit. Do you know what this is? No. This is the bullshit belt. When I, when Dan thinks I'm chatting shit, 
But it's the way he he. I'm literally, surprised the ding still works. Couldn't on it. he sell cars? He could sell secondhand cars so fucking well. It's the way he went. I, t- I swear to God, I swear on your mum, I swear on my mum, I swear on fucking pillows with your jays on. Right, forty six minutes. I put it on my phone. I swear on cars, mum's life. And then you go, and then and he goes, no, I swear to God. And then two weeks later, he goes, oh yeah, that was total bullshit. That. Ask him. I won't even look at him. I won't even try and convince him. Ask him. You're right, Carl. Hello. 46, like why 40, like, have you done a litmus test where you've done a 35 minute one and gone, ah, ah. false alarm. And then 11 minutes later, what about this hands. is years of experience of having KFC, the gravy and the, the herbs and spices does something to my stomach. And 46 minutes later, I am going to paint a bowl of KFC. <laughs> Can we get KFC when we go to? Yes. yes. Uh, let's have, uh, should we have an, a, a break? Cause that was free range, utter bullshit. <laughs> and I loved it. But we need some fucking structure. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to Trans Alloy Wheels, one of our sponsors for this week's podcast. If you need anything doing to your car, bodywork, alloy wheel refurbishment, anything like that, they're based in Leeds and they can do anything for you if you're based in the Yorkshire area. These guys are a well-trusted family-run business. If you need anything on your car, sorting out the bodywork, the wheels, jazzing up, fixing, these are the guys to see. Trans Allo Wheels Limited. They're dead good lads. Please go and see them. They've been a big supporter of the podcast from day one. We love them. They do amazing work. We've had so many good reviews from our listeners. We've gone and seen Charlie. Go and get your car sorted out and tell them we sent you. As Adam said, there's a massive list of things these guys do. And the best news is, as have a word listeners and watchers, you get 25% off everything. Make sure you let them know we sent you. You'll get a discount. They know we're sending them customers. Everyone's a winner. Now back to the podcast. So, Brennan J. Reese. As I live and breathe. I love making up initials. It's really annoying. Um, So, we have got... A few questions. It's weird because we get some stand-up questions and we sort of, we can ask them with Brennan in, yeah. in house, can't we? Uh, David, David Everson says we get questions and stuff from our, we've got loads of listeners. Like, it's funny. I've, I know you've got loads. Stop, oh, yeah. Stop. No, I've got over Putting 25. Uh, we, David Everson says, ugliest place in the country. Like when you arrive to gig in said town city, you look around and think that each and every person you see is as ugly as a pig's arsehole. Apart from obviously Runcom because we work here and we've been a bit. And mean I've in already the past. said yeah, that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- this is the ugliest place in the world. I wouldn't even know what Runcorn like. Has it got a centre? Yeah, we found it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, just leave. Don't check it out. Where's the ugliest place we gig? Is it ugliest people or when you turn no, up to a place? No, I mean, like, I think there's two. There's two answers here, isn't it? Like, there's the, every person you see is as ugly as a pig's ass. He's talking about the people. Right. Well, can I just do the geography one? There is something about driving into Middlesbrough where you're like, wow. No, Middlesbrough shit, but if you've done Coventry. Right. Coventry looks like they just like emptied concrete into like a big bowl <laughs> full of like, like big things. And they've gone, well, that's that. Well, like they finished a car park in Warwick and went, do you know what? I need to get rid of this shit somewhere. <laughs> Coventry is a car park. Right. That's- Sunderland's the same. Sunderland's horrific. Yeah. But I think the Northeast. I love Newcastle. We're losing listeners. But je- like, but <laughs> you, you sort of satellite towns, Middlesbrough's, Darlington's. Oh, oh, Darlow's not so bad, but Middlesbrough is like middle. I remember staying. Pete Vincent, who's the promoter up in Teesside, put us up when we were gigging in Middlesbrough, and he was like, "Oh, we're going to put you at the, something like the Radisson or the yeah, yeah, right? the Radisson Blue." And I was up at the eighth floor, and it was a it was a win a beautiful you know one in a middle of winter. December gigs, but the sun was up, cold as fuck. And I opened the thing and everything about the day was beautiful. And then I saw 16 fucking massive cranes. Like it's the most industrial place I've ever seen. But that we, the gig in there is fucking great fun because the people are oh. like, ah, oh, yeah, it's fucking rough around here. Comedy's well better than shit holes though. Like nice places when their lives are already nice. They don't need us. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they'd rather be at home going, oh, look at our art. Isn't this all lovely? That's a nice fireplace. Like, they need to be, play, like, in yeah. a, there's no fucking crisps left. Let's go and see two dickheads talk yeah. about dicks for a bit. Yeah, there's no, no one has ever said, do you know my favourite place to gig is Seven Oaks, Kent. <laughs> yeah. It just, it's not. Well, the, the North East. Shire. Is their best. 
like there's certain pockets of the country where you go, I love gigging up there. Stockton on Tees, Newcastle, Glasgow, Liverpool. Middlesbrough, I love Middlesbrough. Mid- Middlesbrough Town Hall's great. I spent a Christmas at Peter Vincent's living when I did pantomime in 2014. Oh, I forgot about this. You'd... <laughs> Not bullshit, just excited. All oh, right, <laughs> you just wanted to press something. Uh, Brennan did a full run of a pantomime. Who did you play? Aladdin. Oh, he played Aladdin. Of course Aladdin. he fucking did. Look at him. Can you sing? Yeah. Right. I can show you the world. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. So, <laughs> was it was it the Disney's music? Uh, no, it was all. It was like, oh. do you know where they do like? Uh, you sing a Michael Bublé track because it's oh, been mate. put into a racist you, you script. You did fucking Poundland fucking panto. Of course I did. It was in Billingham. <laughs> you couldn't even remember the name. Like PTSD. In the Forum. In the Forum. Billingham Forum. It's massive. It looks like this huge fit has just been dropped in the middle of no, like they had a, they made us open a Weatherspoons while we were there. Made you open it? Yeah. And start in working costume. it? In <laughs> costume. <laughs> yeah. Can you open up? Is the keys. <laughs> yeah and then he's, he's wanking like fucking <laughs> humping a chair like this is what Aladdin does honest to god <laughs> they made us Christmas turn up the costume and it, this is Chinese Aladdin pantomime Aladdin's Chinese Aladdin <gasps> what? so I've got the eyes drawn on oh my and god and hat on yeah no, I, I no, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I'm, no, I can't handle it. I, I, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Old school wait. Aladdin's got Chinese policemen, hasn't he? Order. Yeah, called Ping Order. and Pong. Order. The shows. Ping and Pong. And what, oh no, the one I saw in Preston, this is about four years ago. What went Wong and who done Pong? <laughs> there was a, there I'm was not even joking. Something Wong. <laughs> something Wong. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, old school panto is so racist. It's hilarious. There was it was it was off. The script was so racist. The man who who directed the thing. We had five days of of um, rehearsals. He was about hundred and eight, and he had a keyboard tie on, and he'd pay us in cash. So he'd pay us like rolls of cash. Oh god, all above board. And oh, <laughs> I'm here with just people you've seen on the telly, like. Not recently. It's like someone from Benidorm. <laughs> someone from the bill. There's a midget in it. There's a girl from Emmerdale. Yeah. The the guy was on the poster. It said midget from Phoenix Nights. That's, that was how it was done. Didn't you work with a guy who told you he invented give me a cheer? This is the thing. This is it. He was like uh, famous in the 80s. He's a, a comedian. <laughs> in inverted commas. Let me, can you hear them? Yeah. Um, called Barney. And he had a weird pedo tash. And he was about 60 years old and he was playing my brother. So I come out on stage as Aladdin, Chinese Aladdin, and try and get the kids to like- Shaladdin. Shaladdin. Was he buttons? Aradin. And uh, <laughs> my girlfriend's gonna watch this and I'm gonna get in drastic trouble. Why um, does she not like racism? Dr- <laughs> she, she's so against it. It's one of the, one of the arguments that we have. <laughs> no. Yeah, but just <laughs> hang on. You, but it's, we're mocking, and th- like, we're mocking these pantos. They still exist. I think they must be being Not this year, now. baby. They've been <laughs> put in the fucking corona bin. Jesus Christ. Oh, but it's until recently, they're like, it's what we've always done. And you're like, that doesn't, that's not a good argument anymore, guys. Mm. But it's always been who done Pong and what went wrong. Yeah. Not and good, as British though, people, we're like, oh, this is like the gollywogs at the car boot. Like they, people look, still well, love I that did, thing. You go, what? I remember that as a kid, a kid at Preston Playhouse. I didn't know any better, but... Uh, Went to watch one five years ago. Had a mate from when we used to do drama group and they were in it. And me and my friend Emma were like, oh my God. Because when we were a kid, that, that it's the same panto. It'll be the same script. Yeah. But they've gone, it's right. We've always done it. You're like, guys. And they just changed the references. So right. they'll, they'll change like Jeremy Kyle to Judge Rinder. But yeah. They've not changed the racist bits. Because yeah. they're like, that is timeless. That's <laughs> it's fucking tradition. Me granddad hated them, me dad hated them, and I kind of like them, but I have to pretend. It's Just kids a- going, it's behind you, and he might rob you. But, it don't, <laughs> but it's not come from a place of like genuine EDL style hatred. It's just like- It's like end the of the old, stuff, in it? Old naff jokes that we've always done. It's almost like, but it's part of it. You're like, no. Yeah, it's I time mean, to fucking, someone needs to have a word yeah. with them uh, and get that sorted. But it's not that old. Like it's still on the telly five, 10 years ago where we all went like little Britain's this and yeah, yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Brown's boys can make those jokes. 
but it's just put into like pantomime where we go, bloody hell, that's racist. Yeah, yeah. This has got 10 million viewers, so we'll keep it on. <laughs> it's mad. Yeah. It? How much did you get paid? So I got paid the mo. The reason I did it because this was 2014, so I was only a couple of years into doing stand up. It's like a two and a half month commitment as well, isn't it? Well, it's this, not just this was the good thing. It was six weeks where you do three shows a day. Oh, oh boy, and they're long shows. And when you're in Billingham, all you're doing is getting shit faced afterwards. So <laughs> we, uh, I, I got paid ten thousand pounds. I was like, oh my God. For six weeks. Oh there. my God, this is the best thing. And in cash as well. So I go to Peter's and put it under the do under the mattress. Um, but there was like, because we were getting levered every day. I went back for one day at Christmas to my family. And um, I just got pissed so quick because I'm like, oh, it's, it's Christmas. I get one day of Christmas. And I ended up getting in trouble off my mum and dad because I chinned one of my nephews because I was so excited. <laughs> we were play fighting and I just was levered and I just fucking Can I just say, right, 10 grand for six weeks worth. I, I'm up for that. And I feel like I could play at least a minor role in a local production. Oh, mate, the Liverpool, pan like, obviously, just you've got to ignore this Christmas coming. Mm. But say say it gets back to it and they can do full things, whatever. The, the Liverpool Pantos, it's, it's a bit like the Premier League. If you know the name of this town and city, there it's it will follow up like the Manchester, London, Birmingham. The money they the, get paid, they, they they're like the premier Champions League pan pantos. I this is like, like a championship level panto. And I wouldn't even say grand. that. This was like League Two. We had who do we have? Jake Canuso from Benidorm. One of the Chuckle Brothers did a week because he was going to a few different ones, and then midget off Phoenix Knights. But, the, the but it's ten grand. Oh, so for me it was like. like so what do you think they got it like the Liverpool Empire? Two, two, two hundred. Hundreds grand? of thousands, but like Louis Spence gets paid about hundred and fifty grand per year. It's their tax bill, mate. Gok Wan was at the Birmingham Hippodrome. Yeah, the Panto before last, and we only know that because the Glee in Birmingham is near it, and he was the draw. It was like he was. It'll be like Spirit of the Ring or something. Or and Widow, like, oh, yeah. Ring. Or Widow like, Twang, that's what yeah, something like that, yeah. And he he's the name that's selling tickets. Pamela it's going to be a couple hundred got grand. Got a million quid to do the London Palladium one. And I bet she came on and said about four things. Maybe ran on in a fucking red uh, swimsuit. I, I don't want to do comedy anymore. I want to be in pantos. Yeah. What would you be, though? Because <laughs> you can't be... Fucking, you, you can't be Aladdin. Fucking buttons. Because your first wish would be... Change this. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, so what, what are some other pantos? And if one of you says Shrek, I swear to God. <laughs> so you got like your Cinderella's, so you've got like your buttons who's like bumbling, friend zoned person. Cinderella. In the modern world, though, I could play Cinderella. If you get a man to play Cinderella. Yeah. I'm not sure that's a 10 grander, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Adam Rowe. It's fucking Cinderella. And we could scouse it up, you know? Yeah. Fucking left me fucking webs. I got offered it. Where's I got offered trainees? it last, Did you? last year, yeah. Preston? Very loosely in Shrewsbury. Got it, Got the opening conversation, which was nice. And I was Who like, you gonna play? respectfully, it is not what I'm trying to do. Oh, and, and they were like, well, there's, you know, and it, it, in the head, you're like, well, it's, maybe it'd be an interesting experience, but I've had, f you're like the third or fourth person I know that's done it. And Jonathan Mayer, uh, is a, f a person we've talked about on this on this pod before. He is a gay Asian comedian, and he is incredibly. I feel like if you don't say gay Asian there, then that's yeah. He's incredibly camp. Tapping. He's like, oh, darling. <laughs> His comparing is basically threatening to bum someone in it. Like, oh, I feel a bisexual yeah. coming on. It's like a mild hate crime. And they yeah. booked him to play the the thing of the ring, the spirit of the, the ring. spirit of the ring at the Preston Panto. What's the spirit of the ring? I don't really know Panto. Are they Jonathan, all like Disney? It's not. As spirit of the ring as Jonathan is naturally. So apparently they were like, well, you can do a few of your own lines. And he just started like having fun his... with it. And and they and apparently he got more, he got bollocked, like professionally bollocked, like you cannot do that anymore. There was one bit where they had like a a, a bit of pyrotechnics, like a, a firework like that, that did glitter from from one side of the stage to the other. And, and Jonathan apparently on one matinee went, oh, darling, oh, where did that come from? You'll sleep tonight. <laughs> Started doing just like gay innuendo joke about shit. Oh, fuck, I, I want it. to be the lead in a panto. 
So I need just to think of the panto that I could do. Maybe like Jack and the Beanstalk. You, want me to you could be Jack. Yeah. You could be that cow. You've, that not, you've not lost that much weight, babe. Hey, give me a year though. Not going to be on this year, 2021. Um, it's good fun, but it's just hard work. Like there was one day when I came back Boxing Day and I was so hungover and we were doing a 10 o'clock show. 10 a.m. Yeah, and I had to pull over because I was just still a bit pissed. And I ended act one with a fucking whatever big show tune and I threw up in my own mouth and I went, uh, swallow, uh, <laughs> curtain went down and I was just sick all over the floor. Oh, oh <laughs> there's, my there's like God. girls from a dance school, like 16 going, oh my God, it says he was on Ollie Oaks on thing, but <laughs> I'm never watching it again. <laughs> They they all they all fancied you on the first day of rehearsal, and by the the time they'd seen you in reality, they're like, I think I might be gay. <laughs> yeah. Is that the, is that the future? Do you know, I just realised. I don't know whether you were planning to do this today, but Brennan is an actor. <gasps> I I wouldn't. I'd say I'm like oh, not anymore. But yeah, look, what, what do you want to do? We've got. So this is my acting studio, right? Um, we did this <laughs> with some guests, and we've we've now started preparing it a bit more. So. Basically, you've got to treat this like it's an audition. Okay. Your agents have sent you in. You're reading for this role. An audition. <laughs> You're reading We've for got this role. So we'll, we'll, we'll let them pick them. You can pass them to me and I'll fan them out. No, it's... But, no, random. No, just, let's just get it quick. Ready? Okay. So you're going to get given <laughs> a nationality. There's three possibilities. A job. And what's the other one? Uh, oh, like an adjective sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, so adjective. And we might throw a scenario in as okay. well. We might add a bit of character backstory for you. I feel you two are setting up an improv group. You need matching colors. This is what we do. He's, he's honestly, he's talented. He's, he wants to play. I can do Al Pacino. He's seriously. That's about it. Right. So first of all, genuinely ready. First of all, we've got bewildered. So you are a bewildered. Bewildered. Okay. South African. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he can act. Ten grand in Billingham, mate. That'll buy you three houses. Yeah, it's not going to pay for the fucking court case when I start doing. A South bewildered African South African substitute teacher, <laughs> Carl. What's the situation? Why is why is the South African substitute teacher bewildered? Um, I know. In his head, he's thinking dead kid. <laughs> I can. T he he so it's easily dead. goes to death uh, because one of the pupils looks like Adam, like that age. But it's like year six. Yeah, looks twenty. So, so I'm a kid in the class. Okay, and I'm like meant to be nine, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Okay, we'll just let's see what you've scene. got. Okay, so, um, can I just ask before? Sorry, direct, look, quick, direct to note. So, to me, South African is not so. It's it's that woman who keeps popping up. No, that's that's no, that's Zimbabwean. Yeah, so South African is South Africa. Let's see what you've okay. got, mate. Okay. Okay. And scene. come on, this is a big pay of this. This is going to be a Hollywood movie. Uh, this is how you move up. You can go from Billingham to Chesterfield. <laughs> this is potentially like the so one. I might get twelve grand next year. Okay. And scene. Hello. <laughs> okay, children. <laughs> um, we are going to learn about the Tudor times. <laughs> Without death, teacher. I want to go for the shit. Excuse me, younger boy. <laughs> I'm so bad at accent. They all sound a bit wrong. Who are you, who are you picking up from this class? Fuck you, you on about lads. I'm, I'm a year six. I'm doing me sats. Well, can you sat down? Oh! <laughs> uh, can I ask I a, sat down. a question, teacher? Are you from South Africa? <laughs> yes. Or are you from all of Africa? <laughs> I am Africa. <laughs> yes, I am from South Africa. Have you travelled? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, how would you say so? <laughs> so, so, so? See, see, you are, um, you are telling me you're nine. <laughs> I'm nine years old, lad. Why are you so aggressive? Because <laughs> you're looking at me like. Do you not think I get bullied for this every day by all of these? Everyone in the class looks at me like I'm different and now you're doing the same thing. I'm going to get my dad to fucking shoot you. But you are 15 stone. <laughs> hey, he's 14. You are 14 stone. Uh, scene. I've actually lost scene. a lot of weight in lockdown, you rat. Scene. We've got, I've just done another. Oh, oh God. Oh. Okay. 
<laughs> Brennan, could you please play an overwhelmed Welsh <laughs> dildo tester? And scene. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> A dildo tester. Can I ask you a question? Are you from all of Wales? Or so? <laughs> I, oh God! Oh come on! Wait, wait, wait! wait, 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 wait. See, see for a right. second, right? Oh, I can help you here. Okay. I did a really good Welsh accent. So, um, are you trying to get the tongue? Yeah. So you've seen Gavin and Stacey. Yeah. So you know Nessa. Yeah. Let's just try this. Oh, oh! There you go. Oh, come on, Brennan. You come want? On. You want to deal? I'm North Wales. He wants to deal though. <laughs> listen, love, Hello, listen, I'm love. from Wales. Hear it, hear it. Yes. How are you doing it? Hello. Hear it, taffy dildos. I can't just build these dildos and send them out <laughs> willy nilly. Uh, we build stonking great fucking dildos. If I don't, if I don't <laughs> test this on you, a professional dildo tester, I'm going to send this out to a housewife in Caerphilly and she's going to be t- walking to us. They're all wrong for a fortnight. So go on, love. Give it a good old test. <laughs> it feels like one of the adverts for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you can get 25% off this rubber fist. Taffy's dildos. We were sponsored by a sex shop for a month. Were you? Yeah, and then they... <laughs> what happened? <laughs> they said they couldn't afford the adverts anymore, so they left. Yeah. Fucking up. Should, should we do one more? Because it's overwhelmed Welsh dildo testers. Not yeah, you weren't overwhelmed. Right. No, I wasn't. I right, was, but physically. Right, you've got to go one, two, three. There we go. go. Put them back. Right, last one. Last one. Oh, it's a hard days, isn't it? Da drunk. Oh. Now we're talking. Oh. German. <laughs> drunk German. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing with our lives? Painter and decorator. Oh, it's a fucking <laughs> his painter and decorator. <laughs> A drunk German painter and decorator. So what's, who am I speaking to? What's the situation, And the situation Carl? is, uh, you're painting Dan's house and you're doing a bit of a shit job because you're drunk. Mm. And Dan is not happy because he's paid you in advance because you were like, listen, mate, I've got fucking kids at home and I need to feed them. So you were like, you, you asked for money up front and now you're fucking the job up. And Dan's found out that on your website you were using someone else's pictures to advertise your, your workmanship and now he's found out and he's like this isn't your work you've got no training and you're just doing it to get by because you know she's left yet okay. and left you with the kids alright uh, can I um, Gunter Gunter <laughs> yeah Gunter can I, can I just can I just stop you there I know you're mid roll yes mm. um, I'm really sorry mate I've I, I think you're doing a, a relatively good job and me and Laura really, you know, you quoted a good price, but there's fucking bottles of Heineken all over the landing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I just, I don't want to question your professional professionalism as a painter and decorator, but we think you might be drinking on the job. Uh, of course. <laughs> it's bank holiday weekend. <laughs> bank holiday weekend. <laughs> Would you like one? <laughs> you like a little Heineken? Is he trying to fuck me in this? Does it feel like? Uh, yeah, does it feel like, like I'm about to get fucked on my own landing? Like, oh, you're not here. I know I'm going to get the money taken off me, so oh. he's actually quite a butch person. But. Get your little villiard. I've got black paint. <laughs> Ooh, come on, have a roll. And also, Gunter, mm. you know you're painting the the hallway in London. Yeah, we found it. I think what I think is some um, wallpaper paste in the middle of our couch. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you're looking like a boy. <laughs> looking like a boy. The dog hasn't got to it, has it? <laughs> oh, I can't do it anymore. He's freaking me out. I want to really sat into it. I was like, yeah, I could. I want to do one. So, right. one, Here he two, comes. and three. Okay. Here he comes. What what panto is this knobhead getting? So try and make it random. Don't like cheat it. You're not starting Liverpool, by the way. You've got to work your way up. So, what do you mean? Oh, you're not yeah, you can't, not you can't be panto. going in the empire level. I'll be fucking furious. <laughs> Train you up in the dance world. in there. Tell Louis Spence to get out my fucking town. <laughs> right. That's scared. Scared. Okay, can do that. He <laughs> 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 can get away with homophobia because he's sexually ambiguous. Scared, Cotney. 
What does it say? Uni. Let's see. Unicyclist. <laughs> scared. <laughs> scared. Cockney unicyclist. Okay. Right. And what's got the scenario? Got a flat tire. No. Start. <laughs> start. St- start of the Tour de France. <laughs> I'm on a unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Can I play? Can I? Can I play the Tour de France guy? <laughs> sure. So you're 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 a, a cyclist. No, I'm the guy who runs the Tour de France. Right. I'm Jim. I'm Jimmy Tours. Okay. Ready? <laughs> hello, hello, hello! <laughs> fucking hell, mate! <laughs> How am I supposed to win this fucking thing? They've only given me one fucking wheel. Ah, I'm falling. <laughs> I wasn't ready for the level of commitment. Was, it was even the wobble on the chair. Was, that's me. That's me, like pedaling. Yeah, but why is he on it already? <laughs> Telling <laughs> Houston, I've never been on a fat you side before. You need. I thought years. it was bikes. I've seen it on the telly. Everyone else has got fucking bikes. Why have I been giving this? You magging me off? You trying to make me look fucking stupid in front of my mum? She's gonna watch this. You can't. You're meant to be scared. Yeah, you're meant to be scared. You're not doing. (laughs) (laughs) See, you'd be brilliant at Panto. (laughs) The way you were scared, I was like, yeah. But you can tell he's watched Snatch and Lockstock. Scared Cockney. You, I can't do that. Oh, you fucking mugging me off, you can't. I'm on one wheel, you fucking nonce. It's, Imagine it, someone the was thing that is, Cockney. What you don't understand is he was scared, but because of his toxic masculinity, it was coming out in anger. It's one of the silliest ones we've ever done, Brennan. <laughs> and that is... I want one more. I want to do it again. Are you sure? This is how fucking... Are you sure? This is how people become actors. Is they it? just get the bug for it. Yeah. Right, go on. Right. Blind. Yeah. It's going to be great on a podcast. <laughs> it's all about YouTube now, Brennan. Get with it. It's the 90s. <laughs> Russian. Blind. Oh. Russian. Oh. Hypnotist. <laughs> Hypnotize Brennan. Brennan. Now you can open your eyes. <laughs> now do that. Do the Undertaker thing where you do the Paul Barrel. <laughs> that one. Blunkit it. David Blunkit it. God, you look like David Blunkett, doesn't he? <laughs> and he's got a young David Blunkett about him. I'll play the Labrador. <laughs> right. Rush, blind. Where, where is my scene. subject? Where is he? He's over there. He's over there? Hiya. He's, uh, he's wearing CK1. Oh, over there. Okay. What is your name? Um, John. Okay. <laughs> Need to look into eyes? You look into my eyes? You st- I don't know where your eyes are. You need to look to mine. So you come here if you need. Can you just open them, please? <laughs> I don't know if they open, but they don't fucking work. Haven't since I was a poor boy. Fireworks go off when we're celebrating New Year's Eve in Moscow. <laughs> uh, cannot see anymore. Are you okay? No. Okay. Very, very bad day. I lost my rabbit. <laughs> So, can, can I be- Look into my time? eyes! <laughs> what the fuck's going on? I will help you quit smoking. Come here. <laughs> what, is that the thing you've- I don't smoke. I don't smoke. <laughs> Brennan, after all the shit we've said, just went, I don't smoke. <laughs> Brennan, we've called you a fucking racist five times. <laughs> I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my fucking rabbit. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you'd done a fucking Elton John. <laughs> Look into my eyes. I'm still hypnotizing. Yeah. I just feel like I've got some skills that could transfer into acting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who else could do that on the flight? I've just yeah. You're story. loud. It's be- loud's good at acting. Like no, no, good. no, no. Can I, can I say something? I do this, and I'm so self-aware. When Adam goes in, he goes in fucking deep. Double-footed tackle. That's what it is. He's creating dead pets. <laughs> No, I didn't. The rabbit wasn't dead. Went missing. Oh, oh, right. okay. Do you know, can I, te- can I teach you this? Well, not teach you. Let's yeah. see your acting credentials. I used to do this when I was about eight, when I wanted okay. to be an actor. And I used to sit in front of the mirror mm-hmm. and try and squeeze out a tear. <laughs> I thought he's been shagging mirrors so, as well. So, the best way of doing it is thinking of all them people that have died and that. Or like sad things that have happened. Mm-hmm. But you've got to do it quick. So we want we want a 
squeezing out of a tear. I want to see a teardrop, and then I want you to deliver the line. What can we? What can he? Don't wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You can't make me laugh from trying no, to No, 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 no. This Shut is the, this. It, honestly, this would be the weirdest end to a fucking episode ever. <laughs> but if he pulls this off, I'm going to be so fucking impressed. What's the line? No, no, you don't stop. What you? T- Did you just tweet your sore ball? No. All right. The line is. Have a word. Just have a word. It could be beautiful. Yeah. Could just could be beautiful. Am I? Am I scouse? I've got my voice. Unfortunately, yeah. Why does that make it easier? I just want to know what. Uh, go on. And into this is into into the camera. I'd get to do this backstage, wouldn't I? Before that. No, we're we're in this. It's just it's action. They can cut it. No, they can't. This is the last take. You've been shit all day. Have <laughs> <laughs> a word. It's good. Oh. I'm well. I'm well enough. Blow on my eyes. <laughs> Blow on my eyes. <laughs> did you just miss no. my <laughs> eyes? Blow off your eyes. <laughs> How did you miss my eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, he just fucking he just blues. Oh, right. Oh. Can we call that a pod? Is that a pod? We haven't done a have a word. Oh shit! Do we need to? I don't think we need to. Do you genuinely? That's what I was trying to get at. I just don't <laughs> think there's any. Oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm spent. Are you okay? I'm upset. You've just poured water on your face. Yeah. And you your top. Eyes before we get to Blackpool. Yeah. Go get in Blackpool tonight. You can't come because you don't know it that looks, it's happening until Monday. It looks like you've got tit tears. I've got tit tears. Um, Brennan Reese, that was all sorts of wonderful and ridiculous. Um, when, um, which panto can people come and see you in? <laughs> <laughs> Got anything you do want to plug? No, just sort of like follow you. Yeah, just follow me in that. At Brennan Reese, B R E double N A N R double E C E. There we go. B R E N N N A N. Give uh, Brennan a follow, and uh, that's it. I need to go and dry. Yeah, he needs to go and dry. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, Brennan. You'll be back soon, lads. Um, and we'll see you all very soon. Please, if you are watching, haveawordpod.com for merch, patreon.com slash haveawordpod. You get an extra episode every week. You get early access to this public stuff. And uh, also, Saturday the 19th of uh, September, which is uh, like this week when th- this video goes out, uh, if you wouldn't mind coming to see me do some stand-up in Leeds, uh, we need to shift the last few tickets. So you can go to adamrow.co.uk forward slash shows and we will have some news about some live Have A Weird shows coming very soon. And you've got one more week to get in on the orange hoodie. If you can send in a, what is it, a screenshot where you've you want to win this, baby? And rung the bell on YouTube and then got one of your mates to do it, send it into haveawordpod at gmail.com. We will, for this one of three you will get this wonderful orange Have A Word hoodie. And two free tickets to any show you ever want to come to, be that a Have A Word show, a Dan tour show, a me tour show, any show you want to come to, two free tickets on top of the orange hoodie. Send your screenshots to Have A Word And you have a dick pic as well if you want now. And a dick pic. I'm single. I'm always single now, aren't you? I'm sending dick pics. Why did it take you so long to squeeze out a tear? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>